All right, let's go to 4.2. Attending attendance at council meeting, I do have a comment, and I'd like to add in the end, staff shall provide the commission with advance notice for the commission to select a member to attend a city council meeting. And council member Moore has also a comment. Yeah, council member Moore. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were going to read it. Um, sure, I was just adding preferably the chair or the vice chair, but I'm happy either way. In okay, case, um, Council Member Chow? I have a question. It reads right now, when the commission has an item of interest mm -hmm. on the council agenda, so how is that determined? For example, sometimes there are items that might fall under a certain commission, but it may not have gone through the commission. It would generally be determined by the commission. In the vast majority of cases, it will be items where the commission has made some recommendation to council. So the commission will decide whether an item is of interest. Then the, the staff may or may not know if they are interested. So the the primary purpose of this is to have a, if there is a recommendation being made to council to have a, a, a have a have a commissioner there to speak to the recommendation. So staff uh, does not need to to attempt mm. to translate um, the commission's uh, thoughts on an issue. But usually so, the council doesn't even know when a, an item is on the agenda until like the Wednesday before, or so. How, how, can, how much advance notice can we give the commissioners or to select a member? So the, the, there will have to be some internal procedures that we develop to make sure that this is, that, 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 um, this is convenient for the commissioners. So maybe the commissioner, when they are discussing a, an item, they might already be uh, deciding on who will be reporting through the council and that person might keep notes and have some <laughs> and and uh, know that they will be watching they, they could they, like that would that. be one way to do it yeah I mean that this this leaves it to the commissions to, to figure out how to do that okay thank you so I do like council member Moore's addition preferably uh, the chair or the vice chair so I like to incorporate council member, member Moore's addition and my um, and but I'll take a straw vote um, Council Member Fru? I am good with both of those incorporations. Council Member Chow? Yes. Uh, Vice Mayor Mohan? Yeah, I'm fine with the original language and the additions you suggested. And Council Member Moore? Um, okay, so just to clarify, so it, it would read if you had a combination, it would be something like staff shall provide the commission with advance notice for the commission to select a member to attend the city council meeting preferably the chair or vice chair somewhere inserted in there. So Absolutely, that, yes. That, that would be it. So I, I like the combination. So I don't know um, how we can uh, yeah. uh So that. I vote yes, too. So we have a 5-0. Thank you. All right, now we're going to move to 4.4, appointment of commission and committee applicants. Okay. And we have, um, uh, it says multiple council members suggest to uh, not eligible to serve on any commission. And Council Member Chow has a comment, and Council Member Moore has a comment. Can we have Council Member Chow um, putting your um, comment first? Um, yeah, I think there is, um, we should remember, and anyone serving as a commission, they have to sign Form 700, and then any communication they have on an item will be subject to open meeting law, law, the Brown Act. So the undue inference actually I'm more concerned of from the past four years are undue inference by former commissioners and city council members communicating with city staff um, since they are not subject to Brown Act or any or from 700, but then they have connection and influence on um, city staff due to their past authority. And that I'm more concerned of. I think we need transparency on that more. And uh, 
I don't think in the spirit of collaboration, we should not. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Council Member Moore, your um, input on your recommendation. Uh, well, I'm, I'm interested in what uh, Council Member Chow was just adding there. So um, I would like to know about the, the communications from the, I think it's getting awfully difficult when you're talking about just specific council members, but um, uh, if, if, you know, I wonder when it, we have um, a, a lot of uh, developer interaction with, with the staff, uh, we see some projects come to us pretty far uh, along, um, and it seems sometimes that decisions have been made before um, they get to the planning commission or, or council, a lot of decisions. So um, I am curious about this. I'm not really sure how it should be um, best worded, but I, I feel that this one item seems to target an individual um, commissioner and and they seem to have been named during the public comment um, as well, uh, which is which is troubling. Um, so I wouldn't want to think that this was written in order to um, in order to somehow sanction that individual. But the addition that I added here was that the commissioners and the committee members shall not be employees of the city. That seems pretty self-explanatory, um, or companies, and I'm not sure how to best word this, companies which the city contracts with or employees of subcontracted companies. Um, so for instance, I, I wouldn't want to see somebody who's a s subcontractor of um, a company that we um, have doing a, a, a project, per, perhaps a, um, yeah. So there, you know, I have seen that, and then I would, I would want to make sure that that's being um, revealed because sometimes it's harder to find and if a person doing a s form 700 says that they worked for this company but you dig into the um, you dig into the actual contract and you see who they have for a con subcontractor um, then you find it there um, that that could be um, problematic right. thank you council member Moore. do we have comments from the um, other council members or uh, the city attorney um, have want to comment on Council Member Moore's concerns. I do believe we have um, rules that's uh, for commission and commission comm appointments to follow. And um, uh, do we have any comments from? Um, so, so employees from the city are, are, mo are commissions generally are generally are employees of the city are generally not allowed to serve on commissions. Uh, there is at least one um, committee that by code um, requires um, city employees to be appointed. So um, we would need to address that issue if we were going to, to um, if we're going to go down that path. Um, and, and then I, I, they, I guess the, the only thing I would, would, would caution that employees of, 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 of com companies that the city contracts with or subcontracted companies, you know, the city contracts with, you know, for example, Microsoft, um, you know, to, 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 uh, to, for, to obtain um, Microsoft software. And so I'm not sure that, um, that the intent would be to, you know, prohibit a, a, a software engineer that was working at Microsoft to, to uh, who, you know, otherwise is qualified to serve on a commission to be a city commissioner. Okay, thank you for the clarification, Council Member, uh, um, no, uh, City Manager Jensen. I like to say multiple Council Members um, recommended to um, not eligible to serve on any commission. I'm one of them. It is not targeted on any specific former Council Members or Council Members because we are all included. We are all going to be former Council Members. So um, this is a general, uh, um, I, I want to specify, we are elected officials and appointed officials are still officials. They are mm. officials. They do have to form the Form 700. I want to share one, one, um, one document with you. The undue influence to me is real because it's not, I'm not, yeah, maybe, I'm not really concerned about staff. I'm more concerned about for, former council members have friends who are current council members and a lot of things can be, um, 
done. So I'm going to share one document with you that I am very concerned about this. Um, let's see if, am I sharing? Excuse my redundancy in doing things like this. Uh, how do I share? Oh, here we go. I'm going to share this document with you. Am I sharing? Yes. Okay, thank you. So this document talk about, in 2022, all of us, current city council members, a lot of us, went to the Cal City's annual conference in uh, Long Beach from September 9th, 22nd to September 9th, uh, 997 to 99. I actually have to say I was surprised. Then Planning Commissioner Stephen Sharp, who was a former mayor and former council member, and also a candidate for city council, was there. And I've asked many, many councils around us. This conference is for, am I, am I doing right to show? This conference is for city council members and also actually city managers. It's never meant for city um, planning commission. They have their own city council. And so I asked city manager, who paid for this? We pay for it, the public fund pay for it, the registration fee, the uh, round trip airfare. This is what undue, conflict, undue influence I'm influenced to. I'm not blaming anything. I'm just saying as a city council member, when I retire, I should not be on any commission right away because I will probably have known the city attorney for, or city manager for a long time and I have colleagues on the uh, on the uh, council, so it's very easy to influence decisions. And as a retired former city council member or city man, um, mayor, there are so many things we can do in the community to still contribute our expertise. We can join nonprofit, we can make public comments, we can do a lot of things. But to be on a appointed commission is a bit out of order to me because as a city council member after eight years you're not supposed to run you're going to read for four years then if you want to run again you can run again to me that's a very good rule I, I understand this is my personal view so I'm going to open up to everybody's comment but to me this is undue influence from someone who knows the current council members well and to me this is not a good way to um, spend public fund and um, I was surprised that that's happened. That doesn't mean I proposed this actually this was not proposed by me um, you know uh, City Attorney Jensen did this and when I look at it I really believe this is a good policy for current city council members who retire and not to be on a city commission but contributing many other ways of his or her expertise. So this applied to all of us. I'm gonna stop sharing and go back to my original document. Uh, Council Member Moore. Um, okay, thank you. So that does go back to uh, my sense that a uh, individual planning commissioner is was being um, singled out and uh, and uh, I think that that's uh, important to point that out. So um, also our, our city manager was appointed uh, in late July and uh, the decisions about what trips are paid for or not paid for um, are, are made under the city manager's office. So if that uh, trip um, was uh, given to uh, the the planning commission the planning commissioner uh, to to go then that was a decision that was made by the city manager so I think you should bring up bring the, your question up and perhaps you I, I hope that you did bring that question up to the city manager and it also brings up another item which is uh, travel policy which I didn't see in um, in this uh, procedural manual because I've had this question myself. Um, I want to go to the NLC uh, conference in, in DC 
coming up and um, there's some question for about whether or not I would be able to do that if the city would pay for it or not um, and uh, it's unclear to me how much money has been allocated for travel how many um, conferences are we allowed to to go to um, and uh, you know I, moving on I have questions about uh, other reimbursements um, I purchase a, a great number of, of books um, I'm a fan of Solano Press they've got you know pitch for them um, they've got all these governmental books and and um, that I've been buying them with my own money so I think we're missing um, travel policy not just for uh, the council um, uh, but for the Planning Commission as well. Can we well. get back to the subject because we really want to move forward. Well I think you, yeah. you moved the subject mm -hmm. on to having almost uh, into singling out a Planning Commissioner and I really think the issue there is that your, your manager made a decision that that trip would be paid for. So take up your issue with the manager, you can bring it up to the whole council and talk about travel policy but I don't think it's appropriate for us to be singling out a planning commissioner and say, oh, well, you can't serve a consecutive term because the city manager decided that you could go to a conference down in Long Beach. I don't think that that's appropriate. Right. Thank you very much, Councilmember Moore. So I, I just want to repeat what I said. I did say the relationship with the city manager, too, and the city attorney. After, you know, four or eight years, there is a personal influence and a Appointed officials are officials, and they have the same privilege sometimes as the elected officials. I'm going to rest my case and go back mm -hmm. to Council Member Chow. Okay, so um, I want to clarify. Um, first, I think city attorney mentioned that he reviewed the uh, council procedures in like seven or eight other cities, and only one other city council has a um, similar policy, which is the Los Altos City Council. And that's one of the city council that all tend to have political infights between council members. So that's your information. And my question about this modification that's proposed is, if it's not proposed, uh, if it's, it's not modified, it doesn't apply to on the planning commission, Stephen Schaff, but if it's modified, it would apply immediately to him, right? Mm -hmm. So, so yes. Yeah, so the the, sta the staff rec recommendation would would not affect any uh, any commissioners serving their current term. Okay, so it would apply to the next appointment. That's correct. But with the proposed modification, it would target whoever serving right now and their term will be terminated uh, immediately or when their 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 term would n would their term would become inconsistent with the policy that's adopted by council and it would be up to council to vote to appoint a re remove the commissioner and appoint a replacement so that would require f further action of council hmm. But per this policy, it will be city clerk who would just terminate, uh, and it doesn't even require a council action. No, this is that that, that the, the only grounds that I'm aware of in the commissioner's handbook for for the city clerk um, terminating a, a commissioner without council action is is is, is attendance. Oh, or attendance. I see. Okay. Okay. Any more comments? Then, so thank you for clarifying that. The proposed modification by the multiple council members will indeed target the one c current uh, serving planning commissioner. And um, I think the what, the what I'm proposing here is really, I think the city staff um, has um, I think we, we want to work well with the city staff, but a lot of times, a variably council member might mention something to a city staff. What we need is a council city staff, the city manager should communicate, um, city staff, if anyone make a recommendation, that's not a direction. 
and therefore they should convey that message or suggestion to the city manager or their supervisor rather than being influenced. Whether one person is being influenced or not is on them or, or the, the council, the, the product of the, uh, the code of conduct of city staff. So I wonder what kind of training city staff has in terms of how to uh, deal with council member child, because influence. of timing, can we limit this mm -hmm. to, um, we can talk about that another agenda item. Can we limit mm -hmm. to the uh, what we're deciding right now? Because we have a lot of items to go to. Mm -hmm. OK. Just a uh, request. OK, Council Member Moore, and we really want to limit our, our deliberation to one or two minutes so we can uh, take a straw vote. OK. Um, so I, I want to point out that this, um, the, the suggestion to um, add the word service uh, on has the effect of um, punishing um, punishing um, a planning commissioner for having been allowed to attend a conference. And I wanted understood that these conferences have multiple tracks when you're there. They're, they're educational. Um, and you know and that's that's why we go. Um, so this this individual planning commissioner is being um, targeted um, and punished with removal from the planning commission by um, that suggestion. And this is the first I have to say this is the first time this has been brought up to um, this council by uh, by by the mayor. And um, I think that this is. Uh, the timing is odd because this uh, travel happened, I believe, in, in September, and it was authorized travel authorized by the city manager. So again, I think if, if the mayor has a problem with that decision, that a discussion about travel policy should be put in place, a discussion with the city manager about uh, the allocation of these uh, uh, mm. trips should should happen and but we're we're punishing him without and, and we're not even allowing him to speak and I think that's quite unfair okay so um, okay. okay council member more um, that's good and then um, I, I just want to say I'm giving an example of undue influence yeah that's just so it. okay it's not toward any council members in as, as uh, or um, commissioners and as um, uh, city attorney Jensen said, a removal of the commission still needs to be a process. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I, I really want to move on a straw so vote. So I want to propose a straw vote for my addition. Oh, okay. Um, we need to empower the city staff to give them a tool to report and do inference by former council member commissioners so that they can then use this say, I need to report that. And therefore, then that could be a way to curb any future undue inferences. So I um, would like to add city staff, um, the one that's proposed here. City staff should report communications from former council members and former commissioners on issues related to city business through uh, phone calls or in-person communications. I did not include email because that's already part of the public record, um, usually searchable, but it could be just through any communication means. I think this really empowers the city staff okay. to make this transparent. Yeah, so that's in your yeah. um, recommendation already. All right, so yeah. let's take Can a straw. vote on this? Yeah. We, we haven't taken a straw vote yet. Okay, so mm -hmm. I would like to take a straw vote. Anybody is re re you know, in favor of any one of these recommendations or as language as is? And anybody wants to volunteer first? Sure. Vice Mayor Mohan? Sure. I'm, I'm uh, okay with the original language, but uh, I'm also, uh, if uh, to move the process along, if we want to say that uh, city staff should report communications relating to city business, et cetera, et cetera, through phone calls or in person, I'm, I'm okay with that as well, because it does uh, make things uh, a little more uh, clear. Uh, uh, city manager, can you um, pitching this? Because uh, it puts a lot, to me, it put a lot of undue uh, work on city staff. Um, you know, 
well, how do they know who is a formal city council back 20 years later or a commissioner? We have multiple commissioners. So um, I, I do think implementation could be a little challenging for staff. Um, thank you, Mayor Wei. So this is happening already without being spilled out, and I hope city staff feels comfortable coming to me as the leader for the organization if such occurrence happened. Um, I was not in this position when this conference took place. Um, I don't know if staff was putting in an awkward position to approve the registration. I, I wish I do. Um, so, but if Council Member Chow feels strongly about putting this commitment in writing, I would support you, but this is happening already um, in the organization. And um, as Chris and I oftentimes say to staff, our doors are always open. If you need to come in and talk to us any matter, we're here to support them. Thank you, City Manager Wu. And, and any comments from the council? Actually, mm -hmm. oh, I'm ahead. thinking that this should read actually from current or former city council and commissioners. Oh, from current, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. because we should go through city manager. Yeah, if there is any undue inference directly to staff, yeah. Okay, um, so add current to it. Okay, so now I really want to a scroll mm. vote on this, how to proceed, okay, to okay. give um, mm -hmm. staff a recommendation on how to proceed, Council Member Moore. Um, Mayor Wei, we yes. have to, uh, if we say any current commissioner committee, uh, come on, we're, we're serving on right. all sorts of regional commissions and committees out there. Um, uh, okay. If we're not eligible for service on them, we need to all resign from all of these appointments we've just received um, and out there. So um, I don't think that works. Okay, um, I'm okay with not mentioning <laughs> current. Um, Straw vote, please. Uh, actually, I'll start. I I'm good with the original language. I'll support the original language. Uh, and you um, can support any one of those, Council Member Cha. Yeah, I would like to add the, um, the one I proposed uh, regarding and uh, reporting on due inference. Okay, and Council Member. Um, I, I uh, I'm not Mos sure. I, excuse me, I didn't hear what you said, mm -hmm. uh, oh. Council Member Cha. So I would like to add uh, the, the one that I had uh, there which city manager mentioned that it's already being implemented. Uh, city staff should report communications from former commissioner, former council member and former commissioners on issues related to city business through phone calls or in-person communications. Okay. I, I have strong concern yeah. about that yeah. because we have so many formal commissioners and former council members. The implementation would be really hard. And if a staff did not catch one I and think get I think I trust the so. city manager to implement it reasonably. Yeah. Mayor Wei, if I can ask um, for point of clarification. Um, so reporting out is to me. Reporting yeah. out is not to council. Um, for instance, many council members in the past um, could be a foreign face to the newly um, recruited employee. And as Mayor Wei mentioned, I don't want that to be a confusion going with council. How would city staff not know a council member from 20 years ago? So, but if city staff has any issue with anybody, they will come to me. Mm -hmm. And if this becomes an issue that Chris and I need to inform you, you'll be the first to know. Uh, if I might add, I, you know, I would have cons t t framing it that way. I would have concerns that that this is if this is within the scope of what's agendized today as well. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, so we have straw vote. Um, now we're going to move to. So, uh, City Council Jensen, can I clarify it? Is so if Council Member Moore wanted to vote on her, that's okay. I'm sorry, that wasn't clear. The, the, the second su suggestion from Council Member Chow was, was, um, was, I was not sure that, because that's really dealing with staff reporting to the city manager, I'm not sure that that was agendized today. Okay, but the current language is okay. The current language is okay, as okay. is Council Member Moore's uh, proposed suggestion, suggested revision. Okay, so we have a straw vote. Um, I'm okay with the cur uh, current language, and Jared Froon is a code. Um, Okay with the current language and Council Member Moore 
uh, Council Member Chow wants her language, and now we're going to. I forgot. Uh, I support Council Member Moore's language. Uh, oh, you want to go to Council Member Moore's language? Okay. Oh, Your struggle oh, is oh, yours oh, or them. hers? Both. Oh, do it. Do separate. Sorry. No, you had to do which one or both. You can do both. Do I do them together? Yes, yeah. yes, because we are okay. adi editing this section. Yeah, so I'll support Council Member Moore's and yours. edition and mine. Yeah. Okay, and Council Member... Uh, I support the original it. language. And Council Member Moore? Um, okay, uh, well, since, since it was brought up, I would like there to be, if I can ask, a memo to explain um, the planning commissioners, how it came to pass that that planning commissioner uh, attended the conference, um, who, who made the decision. I think the, the council might, might benefit from that, and hopefully down the road we establish a uh, travel policy, which is not in this procedural man mm -hmm. manual, sure. and that, I think that needs to that be That could set. be our future agenda item. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, so, we so I support the combination, Chow more um, uh, revision. Okay, so we have three votes to support original language, so um, that's what Go from there and 4.5. We have comments from staff and we have comments from Council Member Chow and Vice Mayor Mohan. Staff's recommendation, um, uh, City Manager Jensen, could you, um, you want to, do you want to say to it? Yeah, just that, that, that was, that's just simply a, a, um, a typographic error that the staff is recommending that be corrected. I understand. Council Member Chow? Yeah, I think the, um, it's very hard for someone to take their time to attend meetings. And some commissions, they have like four meetings a year. And uh, missing one w and sometimes would be already a penalty for this 25%. And uh, they might have tried really hard to attend but then due to whatever reason maybe sickness maybe uh, emergency and then they will be removed from a four-year term of their service i thought so probably we should have this reported to the council and then make a decision rather than automatic removal by the city clerk. Understand. That seems inhumane. Okay, yes. understand. And Thank Vice you. Mayor Mohan has a um, revised vision section. Yes, uh, I, I just wanted to make sure that um, uh, uh, the city clerk uh, uh, would remove commission of committee members for uh, reasons um, not restricted to just the attendance policies, that it would be open to any other uh, policies that uh, the commissioner or the commi committee members uh, do not follow. All right, that council input? Mayor, if, if I may, yes, I, just, I just would like to advise the council that both uh, the vice mayor's revision and council member Chow's revision would require revisions to our commissioner's handbook. Okay, so I do have a comment. We appoint commissioners and they understand their obligations to miss a lot of meetings is doesn't do any um, benefit to the city or to that commission. So I do believe that um, when they apply, just like any council members, we commit to what we commit to and to help the city and um, provide input. So I would think the city clerk would have the um, authority to do it, but I, re I do remember they can come and petition to the city council and I, we have received a few of them. So I think the procedure is there, and I would recommend, um, so oh, I'll take a straw poll. Oh, but um, so that's, so um, I really want to keep this short. This is a pretty um, easy item to. Is the appeal procedure in the handbook? That's correct. Okay. Okay, so let's take a straw vote. Um, who wants to start? Oh, I hate to have council member from start all the time. <laughs> I do actually have one point of clarification mm -hmm. for the, the city attorney, if I might. Um, in the language immediately after, let me find it here, the commissioner's handbook, since it references only attendance policies, would we be able to add um, or other eligibility requirements, because those are purely ministerial anyway, things like residency requirements and so forth, um, without amending the commissioner's handbook. 
No, I, I think that the commissioner's handbook only addresses attendance. So if, if someone is found to be ineligible, I, my understanding is that that's, we would still need to return to council to have that person removed and have a new commissioner appointed. Okay, so there's no way to commit that to the city clerk in any event? There could, we, we certainly could. Uh, we would, again, it would involve a, a, a revision to the commissioner's handbook. Got it. Okay, thank you. I understand. Okay, so the straw vote, please. The appeal would be put on the council agenda to decide. Yeah, we have done that. Uh, so my my understanding of the process is that that that, that you know a, a request the, the request is made to council council members and council uh, council members can elect whether to put the appeal on the agenda. Also, oh, two council members might put the appeal on the agenda, but um. wouldn't the council usually don't even. Um, manager yes Ooh, my like? most recent recollection and city clerk can correct me is um, when the commissioner receives a notice from the city clerks about their absence and their um, termination they will appeal through the clerk's office and clerk's office will notify me and in conjunction consultation with mayor to see when we can put it on the next council agenda for council to consider their appeal oh so is that spelled out in the handbook? I believe it's spelled out in the in the handbook in, in the commissioner handbook or in um, I think it's in a resolution. Uh, Mayor, so yes, please. Um, I, I may I clarify. So the the resolution states that, um, as well as the attendance policy in, hand, in the handbook, that the um, any commissioner that's terminated because of the attendance policy may request a waiver from council of that termination by sending a letter. Mm -hmm. to the city council members oh, um, a waiver of that particular yes a waiver emphasis. to be reinstated um sent so sending sending a request to be reinstated stating the reasons for their absences and setting forth a commitment to attend future reading uh, meetings could we so just the process is there add uh, on this item just that commissioners can appeal to through the city clerk it is so in the handbook so I, I would like to move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, Council Member Morrill, please okay. be short. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, I have trouble with the word um, performance um, and committee member performance. Um, it's not really pointing to um, the requirements of the, the handbook, so I'm a little concerned about that. And so the way I would remedy that is to make sure that this is not retroactive, um, but to also add something, some language saying that it's performance identified in the, the handbook. So what I don't want to see is, uh, well, we didn't, the, the, the certain members of this, this council didn't, did not uh, find a way to remove a planning commissioner. So now we're going to bring it up on a performance issue and it's not retro, it, it, it is not retroactive. So we can bring up something that happened last year or five years ago or whenever and um, remove that individual. So I want to make sure that that's not what we're doing here. I should just clarify that 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 all commissioners uh, serve at the pleasure of council, and 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 that's the status quo, and and this does not uh, change that. Thank you. So, uh, Strovo, please. I I I'm going to recommend the staff recommendation. That, that's concur. my vote. And anybody wants to? Yeah, I'm satisfied with the original language. With the I still would yes. prefer if it's uh, clear how to appeal, but I, I'm just about one vote. Council Member Moore. Okay, um, I, I will agree with the edits which are in the, the which the staff provided, um, and I want to I want to reiterate that uh, I would prefer this uh, um, not be able to, when, once this is a, a applied, if we do agree with this procedural manual that it's, um, that it's uh, effective as of the date of the resolution moving forward and that we are not um, looking backward with it. Uh, I, I'm sorry, a little, so you're approving it with addition? No, I'm approving it with, with the edits which staff provided. Um, which where they corrected committee hand commission and committee mm -hmm. handbook with commissioner's okay. handbook. That's that's it. All right. Thank you. And Councilmember Foon. 
I already noted my concurrence. Okay, thank you. So we are going to move forward with the staff recommendation. Thank you very much. Okay, we are moving to 4.6. And the staff recommendation, we have staff recommendation to delete commissioners from the last sentence. We have Council Member Moore. Council Member Moore, please, um, uh, your floor. Okay. Um, so he here, there, this was actually a recommendation that uh, we heard in the in the last meeting. So I added it on mm -hmm. um, so that we could have it for discussion. Um, and it's it's saying individual council members and commissioners shall have the right to attend meetings of commissioners and other Cupertino governmental bodies, but shall refrain from speaking. Now, at the last meeting, we had a um, a commissioner. Uh, come and speak to us and um, I'm not sure how this this uh, sentence would apply to that commission that commissioner it seems as though they're saying that they would um, they could come to this meeting but we're because we're a Cupertino governmental body they wouldn't be allowed to speak it seems like it would work both ways Is that right, right? Yeah, and that the, and, and that was not the intent which is why the they uh, that edit is reflected in the staff recommendation um, that was uh, broader than was intended, um, because obviously we want commissioners to be able to come to council to be able to speak. Okay. Um, but uh, through the through the mayor, um, you're using the word uh, commissions. So um, there are commissions um, uh, outside of the city. Um, this is a, a broad term. And um, you're, you're also not using the word c committee here either. So. Um, for instance, we have various committees as well, and that's not being referenced here. And in, in some instances, like I mentioned audit earlier, um, uh, you have two council members already there. If you bring a third council member, you've made um, a quorum um, of the council. Right. So for, well, for the, for the council committees, uh, because council is represented, I don't think there's necessarily the same concern with uh, with, you know, uh, undue influence so you know in that situation council members would continue to be able to attend subject to the Brown Act limitations which you know means they couldn't participate in, in deliberations um, and and um, you know c commissions is it this I mean ever, this this document is l limited to city of Cupertino bodies and that is what um, commissions certainly uh, means in that context and you know again the inclusion of, of commissioners was um, not the intent, and so that's been that's recommended that that's remo be removed from the staff recommendation. Um, th th okay. th through the mayor, so could we have de uh, definitions added to this to to clarify the use of the term commission and committee to mean um, Cupertino um, city um, commissions and committees, so that there is um, clarity there? I would appreciate it. Um. So you recommending adding Cupertino council members to it because the commissioners are being deleted, have been deleted, recommended by the staff. So we are looking at a Cupertino council manual. So uh, um, Cupertino commissions. Uh, it's being deleted. No, it, it shows uh, okay. up more than once. So already. So let's. Um, can you repeat where you want to add Cupertino? Okay, thank you. So under on 4.6, uh, mm -hmm. th uh, second line from the bottom, mm -hmm. um, it says she'll have the right to attend meetings of commissions and other Cupertino uh, governmental bodies. Mm -hmm. But we want it to say meetings of here, say Cupertino commissions. But I, I think actually there's probably a simpler way that, that um, staff can make an edit so that every time that we see the word commissions that we understand that to mean Cupertino commission so that we're not limiting our rights to all these other commissions that, and committees that we're serving on. Um, uh, Council Member, uh, City and Attorney Jensen, do you have any comments on that? Do, do we have any issues adding Cupertino commissions to it? Or is it necessary? No, that's that's fine if, if council wishes to add that. that I, I mean, I think it says does say commissions and other Cupertino bu government bu governmental bodies, but there's no. I have no objection to, to clarifying okay. it as such. So um, let, let's take a straw vote. I'm I'm going to start. Say I re staff recommendation plus council member Moore's um, addition to add. Cupertino in front of commissions. 
That is my straw vote. Anybody yeah. else's coming? Straw vote? I, I, I vote for the original uh, language plus the staff recommendation plus the uh, amendment that uh, Councilwoman uh, uh, Moore right. suggested. All right, so Councilmember Moore? So I'm calling people because people are not raising oh, oh, their hands. Yeah. No, thank you. Um, I'm just looking at the word, the, the publicly criticized commission recommendations. If we are already limited um, so that we can't speak or or be involved in deliberations, it, you you there's we wouldn't be able to um, um, certainly not publicly criticize a commission recommendation. Or is that when the recommendation comes to council? I'm not really sure what you meant there. Um, and then it circles back at the end, which I'm getting a little bit lost with this. Um, so council members should not attempt to influence or publicly criticize commission recommendations or to influence the commission members. Um, and then later on you're saying um, they shall refrain from speaking um, if, they, if they attend. Um, okay, so I, I, I guess I'll stick... I just add the word Cupertino for commis and commissions at the second line from the bottom and, and um, leave it at that. Uh, and do you agree with the staff recommendation to delete commissioners from the last sentence? Um, yes. Okay, thank you. And Council Member Foon and Council Member Chow? I agree with your recommendation. And Council Member Chow? Yeah, I agree with the staff recommendation and the uh, clarification for that this is limited to Cupertino okay. government bodies. But then I have concern about the publicly criticized in commission recommendation part because that's an um, infringement of the council's uh, freedom of speech right. Okay, so. Um, um, but I know that I don't have the vote. <laughs> And uh, also, I have a, an addition that's not exactly under this item, but so we want the, the commissioners. Um, just have a straw vote, yes or no, and we can move um, forward, because we can talk about this later on future agenda items. Uh, no, it's part of this. Um, co if we want commission to oh. make a recommendation to us objectively, okay. but then a lot of people write emails to the council, not the commission. Okay, if so uh, I'm sorry, Councilmember Chow. I'm going to cut you off a little bit because we have four votes already. This information to them. I like to move forward. We have four so votes. they can make a recommend independent recommendation. So you you do not vote for. Um, so I, I like to move forward because we really have a lot to cover. Okay. So we have four votes already. So let's move to 5.1. Thank you, Councilmember Moore. You have a suggestion on 5.1. You have the floor. Um, thank you, Mayor Wei. So um, I, I brought this up at the last meeting. I had heard about a council member who had missed 13 meetings, but there wasn't any policy about that. And I think that's a significant, right? It's a significant number to miss. So I was thinking we, we have uh, terrific council members. We show up at uh, pretty much every single meeting. We're, we're doing great. So I put the number three. If somebody likes a bigger number, if you think five should be listed, I, since we're not um, using it as a, as a tool to, to um, punish, but to we're going to mention this, and perhaps that will be a, a deterrent so that the, if, if we have a council member that's missing meetings, they would um, okay. make every effort. So I, I, I'm willing to change my recommendation to, for, to five if people need it, but I thought three was sufficient. I haven't seen a council member miss three um, so far, but so there it is. Okay, thank you, Council Member Moore. Um, can we take us up? So is it three or five? I, if, if, I'll say five, because I'm hoping it will get through. <laughs> All right, so let's take a straw vote. Uh, anybody want to volunteer first, or should I call names? <laughs> um. I'm happy to accept Council Member Moore's suggestion. And so Council Member Chow? I have a question. So does that include the special meetings that's arranged during the work day? Or does that only include regular meetings like the commission attendance policy? It says regular meeting. Regular meetings, right? Oh, I'm um, sorry. Um, it didn't say. It it says lawful meetings. Uh, that's a good point mm -hmm. so through the through the mayor because we did yes. have the trainings that um, Council Member Chow uh, had to 
could absolutely not attend. Um, and I think that would be unfair for her to be penalized because she had there was no way that she could attend because of her work. And um, okay, so uh, City, City Attorney Jensen, can you um, clarify lawful meetings? So I just I mean, this is up to council as to how, how you know how they want to structure the reporting requirements. If if Council Member Moore is open to to to, to uh, language that would make the report required if there are five or more regular meetings are missed, you know, that, that could address um, the concern that Council Member Chow is raising. Okay. And I have a question. Um, if a Council Member remotely attended the meeting as specified by the uh, government law, is that considered a missing a meeting or not? No. No. Okay. Thank you. So I, uh, so um, Council Member Froome is okay with that? Um, your recommendation? Oh, Councilman Member Moore? Um, sure. Mayor Way, then please add um, if five or more regular meetings yes. are missed. Yes, Very that's good. what is uh, being proposed. Mm -hmm. And Councilmember Member Froon, you want to uh, say it again that you approve? Yeah, I'm yeah. happy to accept that. Okay. Um, Council Member Chow? Yes. I'm satisfied. Okay, me too. So 5 0. Thank you very much. Let's move forward. Oops, sorry. And we are moving to. 5.2 and the comments a little bit later right there oh council member moore you have the floor um well i actually need a clarification of um uh, from the city attorney regarding regarding um municipal code 2.08.100 um I'm, I would just want to understand if that has any connection with this particular item with, with regards to correspondence because the municipal code is talking about written communications um, and it's uh, uh, yeah, I'm concerned um, because it, this might actually be um, covering this item um, so 2.08.100 written communications B written communications addressed to the city council let's see not that one written communications transmitted to a majority um, I think this one is just going based on written communications to the council not that which is being sent out okay so I think we're all right with that I just want to do a last minute check that we didn't have any overlap so the point of mine is that if we have a member of the council who um, who are who were sending out a communication on city letterhead that all the council members would would be um, have that provided for them um, I can't think of an instance where you would have um, a council member sending something out on on the official letterhead without it going through the mayor but if that were possible I think we would all want to know about it yeah, I think the one instance where that might come up would be, you know, a, a number of us in the past have had um, interns, and if you wanted to write a letter of recommendation for them, I think it would be perfectly acceptable for that letter to go out on city stationery with just your signature and not need to go to before the city council. Uh, city Attorney Jensen, could you um, advise on that? Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't think that this policy would affect the ability to provide letters of recommendation. Okay. Yes, please. Um, I'm concerned about that. So we are allowed to use city stationery to write a letter of recommendation and then put our official title on the bottom. Um, is that? Is that actually allowed? Because that's I didn't I was not aware. Uh, of City that. Manager Wu, I believe that is addressed in the ceremonial matter um, policy. That's also a part of the exhibit to the council procedure. So correspondences usually are emails or um, just a regular letterhead um, it has a city council letterhead. It does not have the individual council members' letterhead, but the mayor does have an individual letterhead. So we'll be be going through the. Um, that uh, attachment tonight at some point? That's because the hope. We, okay, good. Okay, so um, let's take a straw vote. Do we want to add Council Member Moore's uh, recommendation to this um, section 5.2? Uh, I, I still have one question. If, if it's an email out without a letterhead, that's not included in this, right? So it's, it's when we use a letterhead of the city 
isn't, this is intended for formal formal correspondence. Formal correspondence. Correct, yes. Uh, for example, I do write recommendation letters for um, not just interns, but people who ask me, but I don't use letterhead. It's just me going out, so it, it should be okay, right? Okay, just want to clear. Okay, so um, um, oh, actually, this is for our individual council members to say, it, 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 do we want to do this? Um, for any member of the council, should provide to all members. Is the original draft doesn't address that? I thought mm. it did address that. Okay, so um, so. Okay, so let's just take straw hat if you want to scroll over. You have more. A comments? question, yeah. So this talks about so. Okay, on occasion there are urgent matters, uh, from League of Cities, mm -hmm. on the city, the mayor and city manager might agree to send that correspondence. Mm -hmm. Then, so I am assuming that means. Normally, when it's not urgent, such correspondence will come to the council for approval. I'm reading between the lines. This is again, we are have making, talking about exception without manage, mentioning the rule. And then in case this happens, will this correspondence be put on the next council agenda to be Ratified? Uh, so generally not, because I mean, if the correspondence is sent, it's pretty difficult to unsend it. The, the rule is the first sentence of Section 5.2. Propos co proposed correspondence from the mayor or other council members on city stationery should generally be reviewed by the council in draft form prior to release. Um, the exceptions are, are, you know, roughly speaking, urgent requests that are generally consistent with city policy and routine correspondence. Oh. Um, so, so that's that's kind of. I how understand the uh, it can be ratified, so maybe it should be still put on the next uh, ag council agenda for for information. Uh, I I, th I, th I think the general practice is to distribute the letter to to, to, to council and, and and council members more re re more's revision reflects that accurately. But the okay. public won't yep. have yep. that. So do we currently have all the correspondence from the city, do we have a website the public can find out what the city sent? Uh, not necessarily, although some of the correspondence is published on the website and um, and it, you know if it's noteworthy, our, our communications officer will uh, uh, So the only it. way for the public to have access would be if we put it on the council, the next council agenda. Uh, no, there's, the public has access to public records, um, and you know, again, if it, if it's noteworthy, we, it, it's often something that's publicized. So, okay, okay, thank you. So let's take a straw vote. Do we want to add Councilmember Moore's um, addition to um, the item 5.2? Yes, Councilmember Moore. Okay. Um, yes, I do want to add it, but I do want to point out that it, because it's discretionary, um, if uh, a letter is is um, provided to the public it, that you kind of get into the tree f fell in the forest who you know how do you know to make that public records request uh, uh, about that so um, I want to be sure that um, that that uh, official correspondence beyond what it, it, I'm concerned about what's happening with the legislative review committee because all of those letters were put on that website and we went through a lot of effort to make sure that um, everything was transparent um, so I want to make sure that the public um, will have access to to this and know what their city is sending out uh, it seems like a good uh, and transparent thing to do thank you and so um a straw vote please i may propose something for a straw vote um, i would like the the staff recommendation with the addition that um the that urgent correspondence sent be put on the next city council agenda um under consent uh, for information because I don't think we should be expecting the public to make public records request all the time. This is uh, official correspondence. Let's just make that available. Thank you. Council Member Foon. Yes. So I, <coughs> I prefer um, Council Member Chow's edition over the one that Council Member Moore suggests. May, may I have the um, 
City Clerk, do you have your follow through, uh, Council Member Moore's, Council Member Charles' addition to put yes. it on the agenda? I, I um, so uh, City Manager will. The I, official I one's not like personal letter of recommendation. That shouldn't need to be on the okay. Council okay. agenda. Okay. <laughs> so is it okay, uh, Council Member, uh, City Manager? I, I'd rather not to crowd the City Council agenda mm -hmm. um, yeah. with that request. If I can ask, um, this is, if this is something I could work it out with the mayor to determine the urgency. Um, if staff can turn it around and having a quick consultation with mayor and we can have this done, um, this will save a lot of time on putting it on council agenda. No, I, no what I mean is, Normally, when that's done, just put that letter in the next council meeting so we, the public has information, that's all. It doesn't I, add I, any work. I, I, would, I would suggest not, um, as our packet is already in the thousands of pages. Um, I would suggest not to include anything else. But if the public is interested, call us. We'll provide that copy to us. I think that will add st the staff workload. That's just, it's just one page usually. It, it, okay, I, I would like to... Okay, go ahead, Council Member Moore. I'll, I'll say my comment later. Uh, um, the, the, if the public's interested, call us issue goes back to the tree falling in the forest. How do you know that this happened? The public doesn't know that a letter was sent. Um, so how does, we, we need to have a, a mechanism so that that <clears throat> becomes publicly available and they know about it to ask. Um, any more comments from the council members? If not, I would like to make a comment. We do a lot of work in the city, a lot. And if we want to put everything on the city agenda, it's, that's a lot of work. So um, we're talking about uh, about letters of, um, it could be a congratulatory letters, it could be um, you know uh, legislative letters. I know legislative letters is on our website. So I am all for providing a lot of information to the public through different portals, uh, website, correspondence, newsletters. Uh, but to put anything on the agenda that's actual work for the staff and also it could be pulled and discussed and, and so I would concur with city manager Wu's um, consideration to make it a little more flexible not to make everything on our agenda that would be my um, uh, preference so now um, so we have three actually I'm sorry um, 5.2. We actually have three comments, uh, two comments. One from Council Member Moore and one for Council Member Chow, one um, as he is. So uh, I'd like to make a straw poll, please. Anybody want to pull first? I pull for the original language. And everybody can. Uh, if you, nobody said, I'm going to call names, okay? Yeah, uh, <laughs> Council Member yeah. Flume? <laughs> Uh, I'm satisfied with the original language as well. Okay, Council Vice Mayor Mohan and Council Member Foon, please. Uh, in the interest of the economy of time, I will support the original language. And Council Member Chow? Oh, actually, we, yeah, yeah but we do want to hear from you. Yes, please. Yeah, I, I like the urgent correspondence, especially anything that support League of City position. This must be something of public interest. It should be on the put on the next uh, regular meeting, likely on consent, which does not take much time. Council Member Moore? Okay, um, I still support uh, my edit um, because I'm concerned that things could be sent out that we would never um, know about, and that's uh, contrary to the transparency we're trying to Okay, so provide. we have three to move forward, and just a, um, I, I just want to make one comment. This doesn't mean we don't have we cannot come back and have to do a little bit more research, so um, let's uh, move forward. 5.3, we have one comment from Council Member Moore. Council Member Moore, you have the floor. Okay, so my comment was that we would uh, add that the council representatives to the various boards will keep the council informed of ongoing business through brief oral and written reports of the council and uh, also add the following, that the council representative shall provide a written report to council consistent with section 3.3, and I think going back to 3.3, if I recall correctly, um, there it was struck to have the written report. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, I, I so think, my uh, edit no longer is, um, uh, it's a moot point. Okay, so um, if there's no further discussion, I'd like to get a straw poll, please. Um, uh, anybody want to start? 
Don't yeah, be shy. I'll, I'll start. I support the language. All right. Council Member uh, Vice Mayor Mohan support the original language. And next. I concur. And next, please. Councilmember Moore, because you already said um, the written was not um, oh, it's a, it's a moot. It's a moot point. Are you okay with it? Uh, no, I'm not okay with it. Okay. Uh, I would like to have the written reports. Okay. Thank you. Councilmember Chow. Uh, question. So here it says mayor appoint uh, council members. That's to the regional bodies. Yeah, that is what uh, the practice being. No, the practice is mayor recommend and the council approve that uh, assignment. It, okay, so I think we're going back to the mayor shall appoint council members to represent the city of Cupertino on regional bodies subject to ratification by the council at it its didn't next say regular that meeting. Here. It's the same as the, um, the one that's for committees and subcommittees and standing committees. The language mm, to me is the same. To you, it's the same, but for the public who is reading this, they would not know it's the same. So, so we, we should clarify that. I th still think it's best to just say the mayor shall make a recommendation for the assignment and the council approve that recommendation. Okay, so um, that's, subject, uh, that's your comment? Subject to the council recommendation. Okay, so let's take a straw vote. Uh, council Member Chow um, has a comment. Remember, you may not always have mayor that is friendly and council member Moore has knows a comment? all the majorities um, yes, uh, nice. wishes. So Thank you. Let's okay. take a straw vote. Yeah. Oh, do you have a comment? Council member Moore? Um, so I, I would actually like um, the, the language that I had uh, suggested for 3.1 appointment to be added here. And that was that, the, uh, that there would be consideration of um, council member preference. Um, I heard that from watching Los Altos uh, City Council. They talked about uh, the, the mayor there spoke about uh, how they took that into consideration. Council member preference, equitable distribution, seniority experience, and benefit to the committee. Um, I would add that in before it says subject to ratification. Uh, and, and it has been the past practice of the, the, the mayor. Um, we would each be given a list of these uh, regional bodies. We would write down um, what our, our preferences were. And I already spoke about um, the issue with uh, taking care of that um, committee because there are certain agencies where removing a person off of that um, uh, off of that committee so uh, in my instance I was ch chairing a, a regional body for two years and was removed from it um, and it happened that the chair and the vice chair were gone at the same time so literally the very first person who logged into that meeting was made um, chair pro tem and they said that's never happened before so I think there is a care and consideration that should be taken and that's why I added in those items um, for the mayor to take into consideration okay. and I hope that other mayors will want to do that as well. Okay, thank you, Council Member Moore. So we have two two comments. One is from Council Member Chow to add um, uh, to, um, uh, if, if I remember the exact language for approval, uh, mayor makes recommendations and approved by City Council. And Council Member Moore added her other comments to this. I think it's pretty clear what Council Member Moore wants. So can we have a straw vote, please? I have a question regarding another portion of this. Um, I like that it says right now that an issue, if an issue arises that is specific to Cupertino, uh, it should be put on the council agenda to discuss, right? And uh, I think there were some other issues like the cities association would like to become a JPA and that they, uh, that was approved by the board of directors could go ahead, but the uh, Cupertino never considered. So how would this kind of thing be put on the council agenda now? I, I think we do have report. Uh, this is my understanding. We do have report back. We talk about it. Uh, we report, but then this should be and then seeking And, and um, I think approval. our council members can propose to put agenda according to agenda item um, uh, proposals. So if the council did it. not request that, uh, what? do we do then if it's reported this is my understanding if we report it's reported by by someone a council and the whole council decided not to add on it i think it's the council's decision to make it 
Okay, two two council members okay. can. I think uh, at that time so the representative I, did not report. I would like that to item. go back to the okay. um, this original one, this um, item, to see if um, we have a straw vote. So we have council member Chow's recommendation and council member Moore's recommendation added her other recommendation to it. So can I have a straw vote to move forward from this one to uh, unless mm -hmm. council member Chow, you have really have a one minute uh, comment again. So. The, um, the assignment to other regional bodies, they don't have, we, we don't do a written report. And uh, the incidents that I talked about, I think the representative did not report. And um, then uh, okay. we didn't know about it, right? So how? I, I, okay, so I, I I find I don't out think later this is, is, when I was assigned. We and have the I reporting system. If you, I, I, this is my mm -hmm. recommendation. If Council Member Chow wants to further discuss this, we can put it on the agenda and, and discuss it later. How's that? Mm -hmm. Because this, um, okay. I really want to move forward on this one. Uh, Council Member, anybody? Um, can we um, have a straw vote and anybody want to start? We have one from Council Member Chow, one from Council Member Moore uh, with the addition to it. I'll support 5.3 as written. I'm sorry? I will support 5.3 as written. Okay, and... I will support uh, 5.3 uh, uh, as is in the original, because I do uh, I think that it covers most of the uh, 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 incidents that we will come across in our ordinary course of business. It doesn't deal with every single uh, eventuality, but uh, uh, as it stands now, it's, it's good enough. It's good enough for me. Councilmember Moore, I presume you want yours? Um, yes, I yes. would want it Council with Member my Chow. edits. Yeah. Who, who, which? which? Oh. Um, I would like to state the current practice as is rather than changing it. Okay, so yeah. me too. The current so practice, no, the current practice is the mayor make a recommendation and approved by the council. Oh, so you want your, your comments on it, okay. Yeah, okay. uh, we should not change that good practice we have been doing for many years. Thank you. So I would support original language because I heard uh, city manager says multiple times that the difference is very um, minimal. So um, that we have three votes. The let's difference is very big. Yeah, well, let's move forward. We have three votes. So let's go to next one with recommendations is 5.7, council training. There is a staff recommendation um, can City Manager Jensen or City Attorney, um, uh, City Attorney Jensen, City Manager, will report on this? Uh, yes. So this is a this is a staff recommendation. It uh, is uh, reflects uh, comments that were provided by Council Member Moore um, to uh, to just make it clear that um, if there's a, a conference that such as such as the League of Cities conference that Council just attended, that uh, training is offered at that it's that training can be. Uh, that that's an appropriate way for council to receive required training. Thank you, City Manager, uh, City Attorney Jensen. And do we have, we do have Council Member Froon with a recommendation, which might have been covered by staff recommendation if I read it clearly. Yes, I think that the staff recommendation sufficiently covers what I was concerned about. Okay, so let's take a straw vote. Shall we take the staff recommendation or original language? Um, who wants to start? Council Member Moore. Sorry, I'll take, I didn't the, see I'll take you. the staff recommendation. All right, perfect. And then um, I will as well. I concur. Yeah, staff recommendation. Okay, I concur too. All right, let's move forward. Mayor Way? Yes. Um, I do have a comment on 5.8. Um, it was something 5. I was... 5.8. Mm, I yeah. didn't see any comments there, that's why. Okay. Right. Okay. So mm -hmm. um, this one says, the mayor may use the mayor's initiative budget established as part of the city manager's discretionary fund. Um, okay. So in our, in our operating budget, our city manager's discretionary fund does not have the mayor's initiative budget in it. Um, it's showing up and uh, you can you can find it under um, the f four year oh gosh four year expenditures at the account level appendix B 
Um, and but it's not actually an, an amount, and it's under city council. It's actually not under the manager's discretionary fund. So we've got a problem, and I'm not sure how to fix it. Um, but we are not following the requirements of resolution 07-103. Um, okay. Cindy Manjo, do you have any response to that? Um, so I would look to. Um, Chris, in terms of in, uh, interpretation, there is a separate budget line item for the city, um, for the mayor's fund and the city manager's discretionary fund. There are two separate budget items. Um, city manager's office budget encompasses the city council's budget. Um, that's one way of explaining this, but if it makes council um, member more feels more clearly, um, we could suggest the mayor may use the mayor's initiative budget and just struck out four projects that the mayor deems appropriate using the mayor's turn of office. And you can strike out the reference to the city manager's discretionary fund, if that makes it more confusing. Um, through yes. the mayor, um, the, I think this item needs to come to council because we did not determine what the mayor's initiative budget has, has been. Um, and I think we should also see what the spending has been, um, what the initiatives have been um, over the past uh, I, uh, several years. So through through the mayor. Um, so the mayor's fund has been budgeted $15,000, um, 75000 for each of the six months uh, per, for the fiscal year. And that has been a line budget item. And the dollar amount, and I could probably have Christina correct me, the dollar amount has varied in the past years. I think it has gone up, it has gone down. It varies. It has been budgeted um, for the number of years that I have looked at our budget. And this is a question because it's showing up in the um, expenditures at the account level. It's not in the actual operational budget. So There's no um, amount there. So as a mayor, I was very curious about this. So I did request um, our finance department send me uh, last two years mayors, uh, how do the mayors spend their budget? And I do have that on record, but to save time, uh, I'm gonna say I'm not gonna show it, but I do agree. I think we need to have some guidelines of how mayors spending their mayor's fund. And I, I like that a lot. So um, this, this probably doesn't say it yet, but it did say the initial budget is determined by the city council, which is $15,000, uh, 7,500 for each turn because our fiscal, is, fiscal budget is from July 1st to June 30th, while the mayor's turn is for that 20, like my 2023 20, year. So overlapped uh, six months, six months. So I think this maybe could come back a little bit later so we can do a little bit more research as a budget because I'm curious too. I hesitate to spend any money without um, my council members know about it. And I, to tell the truth, I do have some questions on how previous mayors spent their money and we can talk about in a later date. But at this time, if with um, adjustment from uh, city managers, um, so proposal is acceptable to us, let's approve it, move it, and put it on the next agenda item. Uh, um, through, through the mayor. Yes, please. Um, so uh, the way it's written, w we're not following what's written here. Th um, that yeah, I and agree. that's and like I said, so that's the problem, and then there's a, more to it. So I, I'm, I'm reluctant to approve it because we, we're not following the resolution that we're referencing. And then, you, you, for instance, this resolution, so you're, you have the state of the city coming up. The resolution talks about you would be stating what your mayor's initiative would be at the state of the city. Um, actually, uh, but that's not, from not the resolution. <laughs> right, right, yeah. but that's what it's um, saying. So, so I think for the sake of time, or if we haven't been following it, but we have a approved uh, manual, then we should be following it. I, I think that's how I see this. Right from now on, we're gonna follow it. I would love to follow it as a mayor and ex mayors. So if we are satisfied with the manual saying that this is a good way how we wanna spend the mayor's fund with some edits, I think we can pass it and then we can reflect on how we follow it. Right, that's, that's my, that would be my recommendation. Sure, so my recommendation are twofold. Um, one is to go ahead per staff's recommendation um, second is to modify the mayor's fund resolution that was previously adopted. Uh, what I heard is that traditionally there was a resolution, but it hasn't been carefully followed. 
So there are precedents set, and in order to make sure that council um, acts according to what has been laid out, he, hence the policy. Um, so our recommendation is this was a good rec uh, good recommendation as, as in the adopted resolution. So we recommend for council to follow it. If council f sees it otherwise, you can always modify the 2007 adopted resolution as you see fit. Okay. So I haven't spent any money because I want to follow <laughs> the good procedures. Mm -hmm. Okay. So go uh, ahead, council member Moore, and then council member Jia. Please keep it brief. Brief. I'll uh, one or two minutes. Please. I think we need to bring up the entire city council um, budget uh, for discussion because we've got travel, you've got the um, state of the city, uh, and this um, mayor's initiative. So there's multiple items here. The technology um, fund, uh, that those dollars amounts as well. I think we should talk about all of it. Uh, bring and, and I think if we start now, it might be a nice introduction into the whole budget where we're looking at what those, what does a contract services amount actually mean? How much can that money be ch changed? So right now, this item is on mayor's initial budget. So we are not going to go off to other, we can do it um, later as agenda item proposal. Council Member Moore, do you have any input? Oh, Else we can so uh, move. I asked a few questions um, um, regarding this um, to the city manager. They will not answer that, but I think it needs to be clarified. So if the city mayor thinks a project uh, important and wants to pursue a project, um, would the city staff time our spend would the mayor then be directing the city staff to work on a project not approved by the council? Mayor, I don't and believe her microphone is on. I'm sorry. Microphone. Oh, uh, Mike, please. Oh, oh, sorry. Thank you. So, um, since the mayor's initiative uh, enables the mayor to work on projects the mayor deem important without the council approval, then would the mayor be able to direct staff to work on this mayor's initiative project? And would the hours spent on the projects be part of the $15,000? So may, may I propose? How, how would that work? Um, may I propose we have a resolution 07-0103. If we want to add it that, that would be another agenda item. Right now, we are just going to decide on the mayor's initial budget. Are we as mm. following this resolution? That would be another to me, it would be another agenda item to agenda if you want to revise the whole mayor's, um, how the budget is going to be spent, how much staff time for mayor's initiatives. And I, I do think we need to go back to this item and approve it or not approve it. Uh, I would like to get a straw vote, please. Could I The details also can uh, it be another agenda item. Uh, uh, see you, so Jenny Jensen. So we'll Did talk I talk about this next time? Okay. Did I say it correctly? Yeah, so, yeah, so that, that, that resolution is not under consideration mm -hmm. tonight. If, if council is uncomfortable with that resolution, I, there, this, this provision is not integral to the, the policy that's under consideration, and um, it, could, the, it could be deleted in its entirety. Um, uh, you know, alternatively, council could move forward with the staff recommendation. Okay. Oh, so um, I, I do think we have. We can. Is part of the resolution we are approving, but we, you mean we don't modify that part? That's correct. That's but a resolution. But we expect A, um, I think the, the, the ceremonial procedure part we are approving, even though that's attachment. So that's confusing. So some of the attachment we are it's new, we are adopting some of the attachments. So, um, we don't touch, it's Council not on the agenda. I, I'm sorry I had to cut are, you short a little bit. It is on the agenda if it's included. Uh, so I think the recommendation from uh, staff is either we delete this or we have any, uh, if we have concerns, we can delete the whole thing and revisit um, the uh, mayor's initial budget later. Mm. Okay, so um, any um, proposals from our council members? Councilman Memore? Uh, I would actually delete it and start over with the idea fresh, and you've brought up the issue with the ending of the Okay, so that's year. a recommendation. That uh, let's take a straw vote. Councilmember Member Flum? Yeah, I would continue with the, uh, um, the staff recommendation as is. 
it, we would be bound by the resolution that exists anyway. So I, I think that what it seems to be in our interest to do is to bring back that resolution at a future council session in order to discuss it and amend it. Okay, Council Member Chow. Um, I will be in favor of deleting this because this item makes it very confusing which of the attachment is part of the agenda or not part of the agenda. Okay. I think it's better to Vice delete Mayor that Mohan. if so that we are not approving something that shouldn't be there. Okay. Vice Mayor Mohan. Since this is specifically about the mayor's initiative budget and since we'll have other opportunities during the course of the budget uh, preparation process to uh, address this in greater detail, uh, I say I'm okay with using the language as stated in the... Uh, so, on the I'm okay using the language, but um, recommend staff bring back um, the uh, resolution for us to have a detailed discussion out of it. Okay. So, okay. So, so actually, I, I don't see any diff... Okay. Okay. So, we'll move forward. Uh, keep it, and but the re recommendation is bring back resolution 07-013 because I do agree with Council Member Froon that is a resolution that we have to follow anyway if, before we make any edits to it. Okay, let's move forward to the next item, which is moving, moving, moving. Alrighty, item number 6.6, .6, Council Member Access to Information. I made it recommendation and council member Moore also has a recommendation do we have other okay so we have two recommendations um, council member Moore would you like to have the four first oh no, no you you can you can speak first mayor Ray. okay so I I do want to compromise but I do want to ask this question we are elected officials work closely with our staff I do believe our staff work really hard to satisfy our requirements, our inquirers, and, um, and, and if correct me if I'm wrong, City Manager Wu or uh, City Attorney Jensen, we do have municipal code that talk about um, council members not interfering with the regular workload of the um, staff. And I do believe our staff really try to accommodate everything we want to do, um, but if a Information costs 10 hours, the staff might need a little bit more time. I would like our council members to work closely with our staff without having to resort to Public Records Act. Um, I understand the need to get information real quickly. And um, so, and per um, the civil grand jury report, it is very unusual for city council members to use public records to, uh, ad. Of course, it's not illegal, but it's unusual. I do think we want to address um, any unusual um, things in our city council, and I want to um, ask City Manager Wu to explain this a little bit further, that so we can work collaboratively as a team, that we don't need to um, use public records at for our council members to seek information. And I do believe council members have the right to get information and um, you know in a timely manner. So council member. Of course, uh, in your way. Yeah. Um, so I, I would like to clarify that all council members have your right to get the information um, just like any member of a public. Um, however, here's the however comes in. Um, staff has the day-to-day -day routine operational activities. Uh, when a information comes in, um, it sometimes interferes with their daily operation. If this is something that staff can provide within five or 10, or at the most 30 minutes, we will provide that immediate response to you. When the research goes up to hours, if not days, um, or sometimes even a month um, to gather to provide that information, we ask for an extended period of time. Um, the difference between that and the public records request is that when a PRA is filed, staff has to drop everything we're doing and comply with the state law to provide that information to the person who made that request. Um, so just based on the information that we have received um, in 2021, um, ag again, this is not during my tenure, there were two public records requests made to the clerk's office. In 2022, there were 21. 
Um, the amount of time that staff spent in 2021 is about 300 some hours for the PRAs. In 2022 is about close to 600 hours of staff time. Um, it is not as significant in terms of the number of staff that we have on the team. It is also not an insignificant number of hours spent on a number of PRAs. Um, so I do want to, again, like I said at the beginning of my statement, is that council members have every right to get the information. And sometimes I go back and forth with you clarifying, specifying the information that can better help you with your research analysis. But when the research takes up too much time and impedes with the daily operation, we ask for your cooperation for a longer period of time or to refine, or if you can wait until we complete a project and get back to that research. So oh, thank you. Now we're open up to um Council. So I did try to compromise that if there is really an urgent seeing one of our council members really want this information, it might take 10 hours um, or, you know, we can really explain it, approve it, say, hey, staff, we really need this information in order for us to make decisions. So that's why I put that um, except with the approval of the council with the majority affirmative vote of members because we can evaluate whether this information is really urgently need in the next uh, few uh, days or two weeks. That's just why I made that um, comment. So, and Council Member Moore, actually you're the next one, so I would like you to mm -hmm. put your input to it. Okay, um, thank you, Mayor Wei. So, so first, uh, there's there's been a reference to the grand jury report, which the City Council has not responded to. And in that report, they make it sound as though I asked a staff member directly for credit card uh, statements. And um, the, the City attorney has the uh, folder that I was given from the previous uh, city manager, um, which clearly indicates that that was not the case. And so I'm bothered by the reference to a report where I was not asked by the grand jury about that issue. And it took a very long time to find, and that was going through staff, to uh, find out what all of these charges were that were coming through on our um, accounts payable. So that was an instance where staff, the city manager, was making a decision about whether or not my request would have any priority. And what I've been told by the city manager is that their first priority are the requests of the entire council, and then next comes the requests by individual council members. So what happens as a individual council member is that you are put on a certain rung for where your requests actually lie. Um, next, I want to bring up um, staff withholding the Valco soils reports. Um, so back in 2019, the developer said that that project got a clean bill of health and then for the following two years, they withheld the peer reviews from the council and members of the public. So even if you wanted to do a public records request to find that information, staff made a decision to keep that, I hate to say this, buried. Now, this year, in February, there was an accounts payable which had an $8,000 payment for the first installment to the contract with the Chamber of Commerce. I did a public records request on that item and I ended up finding that there was no contract, that it was a verbal contract that people from staff did not know the substance of and I also found more things out. Now because the manager has the ability to prioritize and rank. It unfortunately puts us in a position where we need to find information and staff is not uh, demonstrating that they're willing to, to do that. So I would never, never limit a council member's ability to use the Public Records Act. 
because I am at first a member of the community, a citizen here. In fact, I don't even have to be a citizen because if you look in the public records numbers, we have people from different continents who are repeatedly asking us for public records. So, thank you, Councilmember Moore, um, duly noted. Um, I would like to ask City Manager a couple of questions regarding Councilmember Moore's comment uh, for a public record ad of the $8,000. When the, count the city um, staff return that information right away, why does why did Councilmember Moore need a public record set? But maybe you were not, as you mentioned that. I, I was not. I think this is referring to the um, credit card fraud um, that was discovered. Um, I believe um, this was discovered in one of the accounting payable receivable expenditure. Um, the finance realized that um, something didn't balance out. Um, so lo they look into it, called the vendor, and we discovered. And unfortunately, the city had to let the employee go mm -hmm. and also recover the fund that was not authorized. So here we're talking about public records ad, and I would like to affirm from city manager Wu that even though it's from a city, one city council member, the city manager is not going to not reply to it unless it's an overburden of work. If this is a PRA, we cannot not re we cannot not do it. We cannot refuse right. it. But if it's from a council member and you said the, not just because they we prioritize something from the council first and we put council members' request last, uh, it, is that a uh, is that a so, so, Procedure? so this is a hard question to answer. Um, when um, you, when I put council's work first, that's my day-to-day -day job. My job is here to assist council. Um, I would prioritize that than to um, spend my time over one council member's request. However, like I said, all council members have the right to information. Sometimes it is a matter of time. If so a certain council member needed that information in an urgent matter. If you're attending a state conference tomorrow and you need to make a presentation knowing the data that you're, you're requesting, we won't make that happen for you. Um, but, but in a general sense, my job is here to serve the council, the five of you. So um, would, would it be fair to say, Council Member Moore, would you have confidence in our current city manager and staff that your you know, request would be honored? Um, whenever you need? Uh, well, I want to clarify something sure. going because the credit card, uh, not the credit card, but, uh, because the um, the $8,000 payment was mentioned. So the, um, the, the information that I received through the Public Records Act, um, it did come back to council um, June 21st, 2022. That was our previous manager's last day. And it, those items were um, added as an attachment, as attachments to that item. So the $8,000 question came to council, but we were not allowed to speak about the those attachments. And council member Chow and myself requested those attachments would come back to city council so that we could have a discussion about them. They have never come back to council. They have not. And I, I asked about um, that uh, to have them come back and I was given um, a response and the city manager can, I can speak to this about not having them come to council before the election. Okay. And if the city manager can, because um, I'm paraphrasing, correct that. Okay. But still, so do, do uh, it's been now over six months. So, so may I bring you back to the public records at issue? My question was, even if you did not use a public record set, you didn't think you could get the same information from staff. Is that how you, why you want to use a public record set? I'm just going back to public record sets, not about anything else. The experience that I have had is, is that I'm not getting a timely response. And, and that's when I speak to other council members from other cities, that's in there, and they hear that, they're, they, they are dismayed. So we, we have city council um, questions and we have city manager who said she would do she would do her best. And I'm reading this as council members shall no council members shall circumvent the city manager's direction regarding a quest for information by seeking information through a public records act. So we're looking at um, this sentence that whether we want to strike it or not. So I want to focus on decision on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, council member Chow.
Um, Council Member Chaudhry. I need to share my screen. I submitted the comments on the 18th, but uh, it wasn't included, uh, so I'm sharing it. Uh, hold, on. Mm? Okay. hold on a minute. I need yeah. to share first before you can share. Okay. I need to share to reference to the municipal code uh, that's adopted by the council. I think we need to comply with it. Um, this is section I think I referenced before that it starts with intent is free flow of information. And uh, under this, individual council members as well as council as a whole have complete freedom of access to any information. And this section, timely response, it does reference the workload issue that, of course, we don't want to overload the staff um, on the regular operation, but it says clearly the request is not of a magnitude, either in terms of workload or policy, which would require that it more appropriately be assigned to staff through the collective direction of the council. So. I think it's clear from the municipal code, the city manager does not have the uh, direction, the, the ability to decide what information the council should have or not. But the collection direction of the council has that. May and I therefore, I, my proposal is the city manager put requests which requires significant workload on the council agenda. So the entire council can decide with public input whether this information is uh, necessary to, council for example. Chow, can, you, can you scroll down again to the uh, municipal mm, code? Yeah. There yeah. we go. So I, I would like to ask council, uh, city, manager, uh, city attorney a question. In the judgment of the city manager, how do we interpret that? So there are, there are criteria that are listed in, in, in section 2.17043 that um, the city manager should consider before, um, bef before uh, assigning staff to a respond to a request from an individual council member. Um, among other things, it's whether you know, the response would take more than one staff member or, uh, or, or two, hours of, uh, two hours of time. That's not a hard and fast rule. Those are criteria that the city manager should exercise judgment over. Um, for, for requests that take more time, the municipal code, um, spe you know, uh, generally would require the 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 the, the, the st a direction from the full council, and, and that's 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 the intent of of, of uh, that's one of the intents of Chapter Two, Type Seventeen. As as Councilmember Chow correctly points out, the other intent is to make sure that council has access to um, information that's necessary to do their jobs. Yeah, so I, I, I think that um, um, more. So I, I also pointed out that in the government code, the Brown Act specifically mentions the people. In delegating authority, do not give the public servants the right to decide what is good for the people to know or not to know. So I think the current language incorrectly assumes that the city manager has the ability to decide what information to provide, but it should be the council. And therefore, a council member requesting public records request is not circumventing anyone's um, power, authority. But we do need the city, for example, if council member uh, Wei requested a two-year um, mayor's fund, if that would take significant time. Maybe I would like to know too. Uh, please forward, by the way, please forward that information to me. I would like to know that too. I just received it today. Yeah, but, but if it's put on the council agenda, maybe other council member would like to know if it takes more time. Yes, Let's decide together. Sure, Therefore, sure. my recommendation is just put this uh, request on the council agenda for the so council to decide. So let's This is especially important if there is potential fraud or uh, potential um, things that a council, council member might have discovered through some initial um, information. Council Member Chow, I don't see a comment from yeah. you, though. Um, 
that's written. I have I see my I see council member. I know Morris. that's why I'm the the thing that I share was sent to the city manager and city attorney. But on you the need 18th. to have a comment. What 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 is your um, proposal? Um, the suggestion is city manager put a request which requires significant uh, workload on council agenda so the entire council can decide uh, with public input which complies with the existing municipal code. That, that sounds a lot like mine, except with the approval of the council with majority vote of the, of the members. So I, I'll just, that's my comment. Go ahead, council member Moore. Could, can please keep it short so we can move forward? We do have another item to yes. cover. Um, so that we also have, um, and I need to find this again. Oh, there we are. Okay, um, 2.17.034 regarding information. Um, there is a, a line in here that I think is important as, as well. Um, the, the individual council members as well as the city council as a whole have complete freedom of access to any information requested of staff and will receive the full cooperation and candor of city staff in being provided with any requested information. And I want to bring up the candor remark, the candor statement. And when we go back looking at um, the, the information which I requested with regards to um, the, uh, the first installment to the non-existent um, contract, when the other information came out, we were told about verbal contracts, and I question whether or not the answers that, that we were given did encompass the full candor from the staff. And it wasn't till June 21st uh, um, so that we heard evergreen contracts, do, and I would not say that that follows yeah. um, do, the, do the I, candor. Do you mind if I, I, we understand it, and you, I think you repeated a couple times of the procedures, so I would like to really go back to city manager um, so will you be able to, pers uh, or you know, state again that the staff would work with Kendall and um, you know full cooperation with our city council mem members? Mayor Wei, um, it is our job to serve the council, and I will commit to you and all of the council members that we will provide the responses to your questions in a timely manner. Okay, thank you. So let's go back to this um, comments we have. Your, uh, we have Council Member Chow's comment, um, and we have my comment, and we have Council Member Moore's comment. Do we want to make any edits to our comments? Um, if so not, I would like to go forward with a straw vote, please. I want to be more specific about uh, my proposal. Is we need to struck the entire sentence, starting with no council members shall circumvent the city manager because that simply does not comply with the municipal code and then we should not mention the public records request because if we provide the proper remedy which is putting the request on the council agenda i think uh, the council member more had to resort to public I, I records request because we didn't have that that is council member Momo's comment, um, to strike the whole thing. Yes, to strike the whole, the sentence. whole sentence. Yes. Okay. So let's take a stroll vote. Then, um, but then I would like to add uh, that so uh, your yes. proposal and my proposal that um, put the city manager should put the request uh, that would require significant workload on the council agenda for the council to decide. Okay, so you are recommending all three, yours, mine, and Council Member Morris. Mm. That's your straw vote. Yeah. Okay. Mine is like yours, so yeah. But, but you added plus, the city manager's plus. report or something. Uh, I think the staff probably got it, right? Mm. Except with, so I would say it except, according to your description, except with the approval of the council with the majority of friendly vote of the matters oh. upon city manager's report. So your, your, your exception reference directly to public records request? Yes, this is, we're talking about public records request right, right here. This is what this, but, is, this item uh, is. If an item requires significant workload, Th that is it may or may not need public records request. That, that is, that is, that okay. is my proposal. If a council okay, member wants so to make a proposal, we the council upon city um, manager's report, we can decide whether we want 
that. That so, is my proposal. Okay, my proposal does not reference to public records request because public records request is limited to document existing documents that are available. But sometimes when we look into an issue, especially when there is potential uh, uh, so embezzlement exactly or other language? things. Could you speak your language? Please? So, so we my language is um, when any request, information request requires significant to staff workload, city manager put the request on the council agenda for approval. Okay, so that is your... And um, with the reasons, with rationale from the request to the council member on why that information um, is important. And for a majority vote, is that what you're looking for? for yeah, ma on the council agenda for the majority vote. Okay, so that is your recom comments yeah. and recommendation. Mm -hmm. Are you going to add council member Morse to it? Um, that struck that language? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely okay, so struck that. Your, your, that um, language does not comply with the municipal Your straw code. vote is for yours and council member Morse. Yeah. Okay, I got that. And then let's go to other straw votes, council member Morse. Okay, so uh, Council Member Chow, could you please, uh, I, I see that you, you, you've accepted my revision to delete the sentence. I think that's, that, that's the right thing to do. Having this kind of a sentence in there, all that does is lead for the council member, any council member, to go and ask someone else to go make a public records request um, for whatever information they're trying to get. And, and like you said, it is existing public information. You're not asking so staff to go your provide your something. I'm asking struggle. for mm -hmm. Council Member Chow's um, extra sentence that she has added mm -hmm. um, beyond the striking the um, the PRA um, rights, which we we all so have. So you concur with Council Member Chow's uh, I'm asking for her to repeat what she was. Oh, can you was, repeat yes. your uh, your uh, um, comments again? I will write it down. You can go to some other mm -hmm. Council Member first. Anybody want to Ca vote? Ca on? Council Member Chow, if I may, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think what uh, the gist of what you were saying is. The city manager shall place requests that impose a significant workload on staff on the council agenda for review by the full council, along with a statement from the council member as to why the information is needed. Mm, perfect. And, and, and strike and, and strike the language about circumventing uh, city manager. That okay. statement. Okay, but you're not requesting a vote because at first when I asked you, you want a, a majority vote, and it's now you're striking it. No, it's. Uh, I think the that that's implied. Yeah. I think it is an implied from it that is language. Okay. Yes. Alrighty. So we have. Um, are you okay with that, Council Member Moore? I just want to make a clarification that there's a difference between um, asking for how much free facility use has been granted to an entity, for instance or asking, may I see a comparison of Cupertino's budget policies versus six other cities? So okay. that, that would be details that, that the city manager will report. So let's not get into examples. I, I would think let's move forward with our straw vote. So your straw vote is with Council Member Chow. Um, yes. Okay, and Council Member Chow, you're voting for yours and Council Member Morris. And yours is stated by City Attorney Jensen. Okay, so now yes. we have another vote from uh, Council Member Froome. Your hands is on, yes? So I would accept the language as it stands at 6.6, .6, but insert right before the last sentence the language that um, Council Member Chow has proposed on its own. Right before the last sentence. So right before no council member shall circumvent yeah. be, uh, before and put uh, City Manager Jensen's uh, Correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, the the reason being simply that it, it is not given to any one council member to arrogate to themselves the ability to dictate staff time. There were over 134 hours that were consumed in um, estimated time from the city clerk's office just servicing um, council member PRA requests. And those fall into a, a different level of priority relative to what we're asking for as a whole and what individual council members are asking for. I think that that's the right compromise. Thank you, Council Member Froome. And how about Vice Mayor Mohan? Uh, I support the original language with the addition that uh, the city attorney uh, suggested. Okay, I'll concur mm -hmm. with that too. I have a legal question. Yes. Uh, city Please. attorney, could you confirm um, if we keep the last language, no city, no council member shall circumvent 
the city manager's direction regarding a request for information for PRA, are we not complying with the municipal code as stated uh, today? So there, there are um, do, there are definitely requests for information that that the city manager gets, and I think it's challenging for the city manager to to stay within the bounds of the municipal code in responding to those requests. I, I do think that having but the addition already addressed that the addition you s expressed. Yeah, and, and I, I, th I think that having you know having this formalized in the way that you framed it might might, might help the city manager deal with some of yeah. those more burdensome requests. But the language, uh, no council member shall circumvent the city manager, implies city manager somehow has that authority to determine what information council members should get or not. That does not seem to comply with the municipal code. So the city, the city, the 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 the, the, the reason why it's it's phrased that way is because the city manager should generally take direction from the city council as a whole. Um, yeah. There are there are limited. Um, to, it, it, it's appropriate. I shouldn't say limited. It's appropriate for city city council members to get information, and certainly they need to get the information they need to do their job. But when there are efforts that take significant staff time, that direction should come from the council. And so that so 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 that 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 is um, that's what's built into the, the municipal code. And this is, is so really just explicating okay. that. The last language, the last so. sentence is not necessary then. And also, it puts the city manager in a difficult I position of playing favorites. And <laughs> some people might feel, how come you serve council member ways request and not my request? And it might, it's actually not a good practice to even include. Mayor Wei, if I can impose, we're Absolutely. closing yes. to 8 o'clock. Yeah. Um, so the meeting is scheduled yes. until 8. Um, we and have we have the second item that yes. we have not gone so through. So we, we have a, a consensus, so let's move on. Uh, we, we have a consensus, let's just move on, okay. Um, right, let's go. Uh, to I think it's important that this gets stated um, because uh, you're trying to okay, hamstring, you thank you. Short, please. Um, so while there is an argument against uh, doing the public records requests, uh, please note that my public records request yielded up that staff signed liability waivers on behalf of a outside entity and waived the facility fees for that entity, that they made verbal agreements and paid on invoices which had no underlying contracts. Okay, duly Thank noted. You. Thank you, Councilmember Moore. So let's move to 7.1 future agenda items. I, I did make some recommendations, but I'm willing to scrap it. Uh, because I'm trying to say if they're outdated, we have a whole list of future agenda items. And I'm pretty sure some of them are outdated or obsolete. Um, so um, I was just trying to see if we can shorten the, the list so we can be more practical in looking at what we really want to do. So I did some uh, thinking. That's why I put outdated or obsolete items that may be removed from the future agenda item by a majority vote of the city council. And the city manager can ask the council to reaffirm, are these items two of you really want to put on the agenda? That's what I'm trying to do, but I'm willing to not um, recommend it. So uh, multiple council members said, any item could be removed from the agenda? Okay, so um, can we have a brief discussion, please? Yes, please, council member Chow, please keep it brief. So for this item, I submitted another email that uh, was submitted before the seven things, but then not on Wednesday, but I submitted so it again. Your comment, please. The, I'd like to uh, adopt what Palo Alto City Council has with regarding using colleagues' memo as a way to propose agenda item. So um, two council members can write a one-pager colleagues memo to specify what they would like to put on the agenda. And then uh, as long as it's submitted uh, like 10 days before a council meeting, this uh, page is put on the council can for discussion. Put, can you put a simple uh, statement? Do you have a simple I already statement? emailed oh, the okay. city uh, attorney about that. But uh, you didn't they have okay. their council procedure menu. Okay, so you um, want a council procedure manual following Palo Alto City's council with, uh, colleagues' memo. Um, okay, I think I read it somewhere. 
Um, um, yeah, I yeah. submitted uh, again today as written communication for today's okay, meeting. Okay, do we have it? Can um, the city clerk access it and read it to us? Okay, and then um, I, I said I'm willing to um, scrap mine. And multiple council members and said then, any item may be removed by the future agenda items by a majority vote of the city council. So we're going to look at yours and mine, which I'm okay not having it. And um, the last is this. Um, and after city clerk reads it, maybe we could have a straw vote. Council member Moore, you want to say something? Mm -hmm. Please. I'll be quick. Um, so yeah. I I had seen the I believe the colleague memo it's called, mm -hmm. um, and I agree with that. I think it's a, a, a terrific new addition, and I think it would be great to have. Okay, um, can we? So sorry. One, excuse me. All right, I can yeah. see the clerk has found it. Oh. Can we have a reading of yes. it? Yes. Thank Actually, you. Actually, I will share my. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Yes. Uh, I might, Mayor. I have oh to yes, I want to unshare. Super you want me to unshare? So. Yes, I got it. How do I unshare? Uh, can you can you see this? Uh, oh, so, I can see yours. Okay. So, yeah. So colleagues' memo um, mm -hmm. based on the City of Palo Alto's council procedures. Any two council members can co-author a colleagues' memo, which is often a one-page description of a problem and a proposed solution or policy direction or consideration. The memo, as long as the memo is submitted three days before the agenda is published, the memo is put on the agenda for consideration. The council can discuss and decide whether to put the matter on a future agenda for staff to look deeper or not to take any action. Okay. So I have a question. The memo is put on the agenda for consideration. Agenda of the next meeting? Uh, it looks like three days before agenda publication. Uh, so it would be the, up, I'm not sure your question, um, three days before our agenda publication. Would be put on that. Would be on that. On the that. agenda. But we are asking our agenda to be published by Wednesday. So that would that uh, our agenda is published six days before. So this request would come nine days before. Nine days before, mm -hmm. and then it supersedes all the rest of the four pages of agenda, future agenda. So this would go on the agenda right away. That's, that's my question. Is that correct? Is mm, that correct? That's Michelle? their current uh, council okay. procedure, because um, otherwise we will be proposing something in during future agenda setting, but we couldn't go into substance on why it's necessary, right? Mm -hmm. And so this way, it puts more work for the person proposing it and less work for the staff. Otherwise, we will be making a very informal comment. We want to do something in the next meeting. That's more work for the staff to find out what put put, put on there. So I think this is uh, making it more clear and allowing the council to have substantive discussion. Okay. Um, um, yeah. Council member Fu, you have a comment? Yeah, so I have two things. One, I think this is a very interesting idea. I think it's something that, that we can fold into a broader discussion of how the agenda comes to be made. Um, I do think that it would be important for there to be certain limitations on um, how many um, colleagues' uh, memos could be written and, and added to a specific agenda, et cetera. I think that that's, that merits a separate study session in the future. For right now, we are already at 8 mm -hmm. p.m. We've been going for another two hours since our last. It's probably appropriate as a point of privilege for us to take a five-minute recess. Um, and I would propose that we continue moving forward with the rest of the agenda and take this back, the question of colleagues' memos for a future agenda setting. Thank you. Any uh, other comments? So, if we have okay, well, a minor have other addition. Have comment first. Oh, okay. Council Member Chow, do we have any comments from Council Member uh, 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 Vice Mayor Mohan? No, I'm I'm okay with uh, uh, proceeding uh, with the uh, with this item as written. Mm. So my concern, I I I would want to concur with Council Member Froome's suggestion. My concern is this: we have a four or five page future agenda items now we're going to add this in addition to that so I, I would like to have a study session really to look at our future agenda items and and go from there okay and mm. so um can you unshare so i can do i do i still have it okay yes so still, you'll need okay, to start share again so um so the, the the comment is um this agenda item is to um do we a straw vote do we want to do anything about it Mm, can mayor? 
Yes, please, very short, please. So if we are going to discuss this, I would suggest we um, don't adopt anything that does not that is not consistent with the current practice, which is the, the last sentence. Uh, three council members can remove an agenda item. That's not uh, our current practice. And if the majority wants to go forward to include that, then I would like to this to uh, add that the three council members must include the two of the original council members who proposed the agenda. So that we, will, we, are, we are not in a case where the majority tries to shut down the minority from even okay, discussing um, Thank you, Council item. Member Moore. Thank so I, I actually have a proposal that we can just delete this item. Delete this item, okay. For future agenda discussions, the study session, or um, any anybody have other comments? Um, <laughs> Please. Just a question, um, so what is the current procedure for removing a future agenda item, if, that, if the city attorney could um, answer? Uh, there, there is no procedure yeah. for removing a future agenda item. So they live on forever? Uh, that, they, that, has been the yeah. that has been the practice, and some are, are getting close to forever. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, agree with, I agree with deleting this for now and putting it on for, for some discussion. I think that would be great. Okay, so I have two. Concur and anybody um, else, please chime in, council members. I, I just don't think there's anything wrong at present with 7.1. I think it's really important to bring this back to some level of sanity so that you know the city count, uh, the city manager and, and her staff can actually prioritize. This is six pages, six pages of future agenda, of future items. agenda items, some of which date back to 2019, early 2019. Uh, there's no way for us to, to have an efficient city if this is the way that we're going to require the city manager to organize the day. So I'm sorry, uh, Council Member Froon, your uh, straw vote is? Is to pass 7.1 as stated. Okay, so uh, Council Member, just vote please. Uh, um, no more discussions. But I, I think we discuss it. Quite I think it's important to point out the current practice is two council member put on a proposing agenda item, the mayor has authority to decide uh, when to schedule that. A lot of times they never get scheduled. That's why so it's become that long. I think it's a really good idea to have bring it under control to have a more uh, so your comments, please. Procedure. Your vote, please. Yeah. So um, let's remove that and uh, have a discussion. Uh, really like that idea. Okay. So we have four votes to remove it. So uh, I think the right, Councilmember Momo, did I get your word correct? Uh, I agreed to. Sorry, Councilmember. Uh, I'm sorry, Vice that. Mayor yeah. Mohan. I did not quite get your. I I I supported the uh, language as it is. Okay. Um, so we have two two. Okay, um, I, in order to move forward, I'm gonna support it, but we come in, we come back with a study session. Uh, ex um, Mayor, could you clarify which, uh, what you're supporting? I'm supporting uh, the original language, but come back with a recommendation for the city manager to um, really work on this one, and we can always change it. Okay, so let's move to 7.2, preparation of agenda, that's no nothing. 7.5, agenda publication. Staff recommend to uh, move it to Wednesday. So let's have a straw vote to recommend our, any discussions. Um, Council Member Moore. Yes, thank you. So I, I, uh, I believe the attorney um, has information on this for what um, Palo Alto and Berkeley ha has for um, their lead time. And I would like to, I, is it 10 days? Yeah, other jurisdictions do have longer lead times, you know, that 10, 10, 10 to 14 days, um, up to 10 to 14 days. Um, so, you know, three days is the minimum required by the Brown Act, um, where we are 72 hours. Um, you know, we, cl we, we, we generally aim to publish agendas on, on Wednesdays, so that's six days. Um, so, you know, uh, so certainly council could establish a, a longer time period if, if, it, if it chose to do so. There are clearly advantages to having more time to review the agenda. Um, I think I would have to defer to, to Pamela and, and perhaps the, the clerk um, to Kirk Kirsten for, for the, you know, the impacts of that on, on how we would be uh, prepare agendas and get ready for meetings. Okay. 
Um, thank you. Th th through the mayor, I would like us to go to the 10 days um, following Berkeley and Palo Alto. Um, and the reason being is that once we get into the budget, it, well, we were already at 1,200 pages, right? And we had a th we had a three-day weekend in order to go through that amount, which is basically telling us that you need to lose your weekend and the and the um, the, the holiday in order okay, to do so, that. Okay, yeah, so yeah, recommendation like 10 days. Get ten, if you get 10 days, then you've got two weekends there, and then we'll have time to actually okay. ask those. Can questions yes. ahead. Can I have a city manager and a city clerk put in your comments? Sure. Thank you, Mayor Wei. Um, so currently, for the past six months, we have been publishing the agendas on Wednesday. Um, this allows staff sufficient time. There's a lot of work behind the scene that council members may not know that goes beyond the staff report. So when the author start drafting the staff report, the author goes into the division manager, then department head, city attorney, finance director, assistant city manager, then me. So it goes through six rounds of review. So if we push it out to a 10 day, um, that will force um, staff being on a two separate track when they're working on the upcoming um, council agenda or they're working on the next one. So they'll be preparing a presentation for say tomorrow's meeting while they're also working on the staff report. So that would, I, I would suggest the six day if it's working out. Seven day we might be able to, but keep in mind our council meetings sometimes last until midnight on Tuesdays. Wednesdays are usually a hard day, especially for staff to publish an agenda. Um, so I, if I can, I would like to keep it the six day. Uh, keep it on Wednesday. Keep it on Wednesday. Okay, thank you. So now we have, um, do you have any other proposals? It, mm -hmm. We have one um, Wednesday and we have one 10 days before. Um, mm -hmm. Council Member yeah. Moore wants it 10 days before. Staff recommendation is on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Unless you have another proposal, I'd like to put a straw hat. So there, there is a comment from me on, on the yeah, packet. Please. Yeah. So I remember reading the council procedures of either Berkeley or Palo Alto. They publish the agenda, but then they do, the staff do have certain time to update with uh, the packet material. But then it's 10 days ahead that they know what's going to be on the agenda. And so then the staff can continue to finalize the packet. In, on, on Wednesday, but maybe a, as a compromise is uh, when we have important budget, for example, those are like only a few times a year, maybe those certain things, we have that material posted earlier and make that available that we know it's coming, that as a compromise, we, we, if we could do that. Yeah. City manager, we, I, I remember we do get um, you know agendas uh, materials earlier sometimes, and we even have uh, individual uh, staff consultation on agenda items. Mm -hmm. I am very comfortable with Wednesday. I think it's plenty of time for us to review it. I've been on council for two years, and I think the first couple years it was some first sometimes it was Thursday. Uh, so I, I'm a, I'm really okay with that. We're elected to review our packages. I think six days is more than enough. I actually do not like to con uh, have an agenda published ten days before and then continue to have revi revision, revision, revision. That that actually confuses me a lot. So um, I, I'm really okay with the staff recommendation. But um, I'm going to take a straw poll from um, council members. Pardon, um, council member Moore. Thank you. Uh, so I, I want to just mention a couple of things. So while you're, there have been efforts to try to shorten the council meetings and remove various committees, and uh, here's the problem. Okay. So the, the audit committee uh, recommendation from staff on Monday was to have the audit committee review the monthly Treasurer's investment report, um, council member, which council moves member more you, work onto council. You, but I, I think we're, we're veering from the agenda. Yeah. Well, okay, okay, Thank but you. But I'll, I'll just summarize this. You have I, multiple choices. I think choices. city council, city manager, city attorney already said you were veering, veering from the agenda. We need to get back to the agenda. The but, agenda but is you're, when Wednesday you're or ten days before. When you're removing committees, you're putting more work onto I, this council. You I would need like to more call the order, please because city attorney already said this is veering from the agenda. We can always have future agenda items to talk about this. So um, I apologize. Um, I would like to get back to the agenda item. It is Wednesday or 10 days. These are two 
uh, on um, the ten agenda. Days. And then 10 days from Council Member Moore, uh, staff recommend Wednesday, and Council Member Chow added Wednesday, or if there are important, uh, like budget, that mm. we get information earlier. Do you think information earlier or agenda earlier? Which information one? Information earlier is Okay, so that's actually uh, maybe a direction for, for uh, city manager. It's not really on this, um, unless you want to add to staff recommendation some sentences behind it. Do but you want to I add? I do have a comment that um, uh, it wasn't shown, it's not shown on your... Uh, can um, you repeat your comment or your... Um, uh, let me just share. What, what would you like to add? Um, if it's short so enough, it's you can repeat it's, it? It's shown here. It's uh, copied from uh, Palo Alto Council Procedure that all the staff prepared responses be forwarded to all council members um, as well as put up on some place that the public can access. Because right now, I think we each individually ask certain questions. And sometimes I hear, oh, council member more learn about this, then she's concerned about something on the agenda. But because so I didn't you know. You would like, like to add this paragraph to, yeah, so to that staff we, recommendation. I think the, the issue is they want all council member to make decision based on the same information rather than discrepancy based on who asks what okay, question. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I think we got the idea. And um, do we have any comments on this? Or shall we, um, Council Member Froome, you have your hands on the button. Or does City Attorney has any comment? No? Okay. Council Member. Just note that that's reflected, the Council Member's uh, Chow's suggestion is reflected after section 7.6 in the document oh. we're reviewing. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I, I was about to offer the same, oh. um, but okay. I will say that I would be happy to see the, the staff recommendation move, move forward on this. I understand um, uh, Council Member Moore's desire oh. for more time. I think that that would be good in the future at, at our current staffing levels. I don't think that that's really feasible or realistic. So we should just continue with Wednesday. And I would um, encourage the city manager perhaps to revisit the idea of the um, agenda forecast that used to be attached to items of interest that might satisfy some people who want more advance notice. Okay, thank you. So the st uh, your vote is to uh, staff recommendation. Council Member Chow? Sorry, I'm naming people so we um, can go faster. Yeah, I agree with Council Member Fluent's suggestion that okay. uh, that that items of interest uh, with future agenda and was great. Okay, yeah. me too. And Council uh, Vice Mayor Mohan? I support the original language uh, uh, and with the addition of the star staff recommendation. It's, it's always nice to get information as uh, early as we can, but in the interest of uh, staff, uh, 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 Thank you, Councilman Moore. I uh, just want to bring up the the um, the uh, previous item that we had on, on future agenda items would be that we would get a quarterly report um, to council. So you're not going to get the we, we had a very frequent report from the and we were not going to be getting that anymore. You're choosing not to have that. Uh, okay. Um. All right, thank you, Council Member Moore. Okay, let's move to 7.6, Supplemental Materials. We have Council Member Chow. Let me scroll down if there are any more. Yes. Oh, oh that yeah. was the one I was, sorry, I was uh, one item ahead. Mm -hmm. um, City Manager, would you comment on this? Because I think this is for staff. Um, so, Council Member Chow, if I can ask for clarification, are you asking for all correspondence from one council member to provide it to all council or any specific area? If there are any response from staff, then the response should be forwarded to the staff for for a council agenda item, so, so that we have in the same information. Okay. To decide. So what we have suggested in the supplemental um, material is that um, when we receive questions from council and the members of the public, like the desk items, we will publish that. Um, so right now we don't inc we don't include any questions from council member. But in the future, if any council member can specify this is a question specifically for item number such on the council agenda, we'll include that in the desk item. 
Oh. Um, yeah, because if it is real general question, you don't know where to put it on the. So uh, yeah. okay, so if our subject like specify the agenda item, that would um, make it. You will try to include. We will that. include in the desk item if it comes in time, and staff will have again um, allow staff time to prepare the response and then allow clerk to pu uh, to publish it on the website. Mm, so I have the. It Go doesn't ahead. specify that in the language. Do you have a suggested uh, language? Can, can, can we have a, um, because this language seems, to me seems very long. Can we have approved as is, but come back with a additional language sure. that will satisfy Oh, Council Member Charles, because I'm curious on that too. But I am concerned about making copies and the, the details in there. So maybe the staff and city manager can work on it and come back with the language. Mayor, if I may, um, I can work out the detail with you and then communicate that to the rest of the council. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Th that, I don't that feel so strongly about the written copy. I just copied mm -hmm. that from Palo Alto. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, so, so let's have a straw vote to my recommendation is to accept language as is with um, city manager come back with a um, language that satisfies council member child's uh, request Would that council work? member moore has her hand up yeah oh yeah. yes please sorry i was um, looking this way okay thank you so um we we had previously uh, you know, several months ago, been receiving these uh, the questions in the written communications, the, the answers, uh, responses, um, and it, it was helpful. It was a little uh, a little unwieldy because you had to make sure that you hit the written communications, and you would just sort of find it, it was like an Easter egg. Um, so, if that's going to be the process, that would be helpful. Um, and I'm still working on, for instance, that development impact issue, and and I have a now an ongoing collection of information. So, um, there is an imbalance, and I don't feel comfortable with it um, when we're making choices so anything you can um, do to provide that would be helpful okay so that's for um, uh, city manager to take notes thank you all right so can we have a, a straw vote on this to move forward uh, yes I, I support uh, uh, 7.6 as is with uh, uh, pending review later with uh, council member Charles uh, suggestions okay uh, council member Foon. I concur. And Councilmember Chow? Uh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Councilmember Moore? Um, yes. Okay, then I'm okay with it because I proposed it. Okay, so um, we do have um, 8.2. The recommendation is to delete it. This should go fast. I, I, I concur. Uh, I concur. Councilmember Chow? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Now let's move to. 8.3, 8.4, 8 8.4, 8 we do have one comment from uh, council um, staff recommendation. I, I do have one addition to make for 8.3, but it is to, uh, okay. to create consistency with a proposed change that I have for, let me make sure I've got the right number here. Well, with a later item in the interest of not wasting time, uh, eight point nine point three. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a later item. Okay, yeah, and I'm perfect. happy to discuss it. So we're it then. gonna move forward, and then uh, the staff recommends revised oh. section eight point four to include any oral communications that continue beyond the allotted thirty minutes in the oral in the order of business. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good recommendation. Okay, yeah. um, go ahead, Councilmember Chow. So, yeah, I agree with the staff recommendation, but uh, we are, so right now the current proposed order, the city manager's report and the council reports come at the end of, of the meeting. Um, I think earlier we find out city manager's report has some very informative information and also especially the departmental update that she has been doing is wonderful, and the council member. So your recommendations to so move what ahead? 
I Can hope that we still it? keep move put that earlier so that okay, right so after the oral communication. So you want to move number 11 to uh, the 10 the and 11 to to after right six six okay that's yeah. a recommendation okay that's very good and anybody else has any revisions oh councilmember more yes okay so i'm not seeing orders of the day here is it there no nope, i'm not seeing orders of the day and that's been pretty helpful um, uh, um are we on 8.4? Right. Order of business doesn't have an orders of the day up near the um, start of the meeting. You mean to reorder to um, to yeah. re remove or, items or right? Orders of the day would allow us to um, change the order. There might be something going on during the meeting, um, some an absence, you, you you name it, or we we it, find is it. Is that on the one two three? No, it would be an we addition. Okay, it would be an addition. Would you recommend it? Could you could you put on the recommendation where you want to put it? Um, sure. You would. Well, um, probably after uh, the closed Oops. session report, perhaps. I don't know. I mean, if staff could make a recommendation for where we would ordinarily see it, um, that would be um, preferable. It's working. Anyway, I believe usually it comes before consent calendar. Postponement or order of the date. Postponement order. Okay, before consent calendar. Right before. Okay, so started. after six. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mayor. Okay, you you mm. make your. Let's see so if anybody else mm. has any comments. So we have. Go ahead, my council member Chow. You have um, other, other comment. So one more thing we might want to add an item before the current uh, item twelve. That's. Uh, postpone the consent agenda items because our new way would be some items of uh, pull the consent agenda items so that the public uh, is, is clear that that's the place those pulled items would be discussed. Uh, mm. City Manager Jensen? Uh, yeah, so th yeah, so the the, the uh, under the the rules as proposed, uh, any item removed from the consent calendar would go to the end of the agenda. The end uh, is before twelve, or uh, and, um, after af informational. After item? before before adjournment. So it it will be after the remaining oral communication and informational items? If we have any oral communications. Okay, so I, I, I hear uh, what's three. informational items? It's like when we have agenda, we, we um, ask, see, you know, our agenda items, proposals, and we ask the city staff to do something. Yeah, Mayor Wei, if I may. So yeah, sure. recently we have been adding a lot of informational items on consent, mm -hmm. which gets pulled. Um, for instance, last um, last Tuesday, we had an informational item on housing element update. You will have another update on the, uh, we also had another one on Lawrence Smitty design. So you will have a number of these updates, and they're really just informational item. There's no action for council to take. Um, so as opposed to put it on consent and gets pulled, we'll just provide you an informational memo. Mm -hmm. So would we be able to ask questions on them? It, that will be your discretion. Yeah, it's an item that we will go so through. So we can still uh, ask questions on those information That will be council's items. discretion. Mm okay. So we have two um, uh, two proposals. One is to add postponement and uh, agenda items before, si before 7, after 6. And uh, Council Member Chow would like to move 10 and 11 to before... Uh, hmm. To be right after six. Right after six. Yeah. So now I'm a little confused. So <laughs> Council Member Morse, this uh, item would be right after six, and then yours, because we're kind of everything is going to be between six and seven. So I think what we have right now is postponement is right after six, and then we can move um, ten eleven to right after that. It, it, no? Oh, Council Member Moore. Thank you. I pulled up uh, on October 4th um, agenda. Okay, so we have um, postponements and orders of the day coming right before 
oral communication. Okay, so that should be a short mm -hmm. item. Postponements in order to uh -huh. date should okay. be really brief. And then we also had one right before adjournment where we have council and staff comments and um, future agenda items because, as you know, there's things that come up during the meeting that mm -hmm. we're like, we better get that on the agenda. So I like that. I think we should continue right. it. That's okay, so you like to add um, the postponement right bef after five. It's yes, postponement yes. in order to after the five. Day. Yes, and after information item before German at the uh, council and council staff, staff comments, staff and, comments future and future agenda items. Yes, yeah. yes. So duly noted. And council member Chow wants to move ten eleven to after six. Am I correct? Okay, so. Um, I, I would like to say we really want to do the business and listen to the comments uh, of public and everything. So we're trying to um, do a lot of um, adjustment. It is, I, I have received quite a few comments from public saying that they're waiting for an 8.30 item or 9.30 item, then it's 11.30, then come back in two days or next week or in next meeting. So I do think our action items need to come first before other items. That's why um, after public hearing, action items is there so that the people who are waiting for action items actually are not being put off. And so that's, I ask a lot of city, other cities. I consult with Campbell, Sunnyvale, um, actually today, um, quite a few others see this they do do if you pulled out consent agenda it's going to the end so that they can do the business first and have people who are there for those businesses have their time taken care of and then we do consent agenda in the end so to me that is a very good way to move forward with um, what we promise the public that we're gonna do that our business and also be very open for consent agenda um, discussions. So I am, okay, so that's my comment. Any other comments? We have two proposals on the recommendation on the table. Mm. And we have staff recommendation, and we have Council Member Morris and Council Member Charles. And so do we have a straw vote, please? Um. Or we can recommend you know, staff recommendation or council member child, council member more or combination of those. So I have um, um, a list that I can share that. Uh, sure, I, I think you can share. Yeah. Okay. So we are saying postponement and orders of the day comes after the ceremonial mm -hmm. item and the oral communication um, this is my proposal is to have council report and comments, mm -hmm. which usually we do, the, yes, the mayor can yes. limit the time. Yes, we've seen and, that. And okay. uh, city manager mm -hmm. and I guess departmental updates. I, I really like that part that Pamela started. And uh, then we have consent agenda. Okay, so and this is your proposal. And right. then, yeah, mm -hmm. so this is my proposal. And I think the pulled consent agenda, I agree, it should be after the regular uh, action calendar. And, but then I think it should be probably before the remainder of the oral. So it should be okay. um, here. So it's after the action. Okay, so you, can you stay there so we can uh, see it? So I said and pull the, here, pull the consent agenda yeah, I know. Right. Just yeah. Yeah. Share, continue to share so we, we, okay. we know what we're voting for, we're for, struggle and for. Uh, Council Member Moore, please keep it okay. short. Okay. Sorry. This, this Sorry. Which, uh, um, Council Member Chow, okay, good, you're changing future, language on yeah. it. It should say Council and Staff Comments and Future Agenda Items. Oh. This right where you're at, perfect. So right now this is the last item. Okay, any okay. other comments from the Council? Um, now we can have a straw pool. I actually like this, but I would put 10, and that's my mm -hmm. personal, 10 and 11 toward the, more toward the end. Um, um, uh, maybe where would 10 you and like I, to? Council report and comments, city manager report and department has if we report if you want any. I do believe we can put it in the end and maybe put it in writing, post it somewhere. I would not want to, um, uh, impede the um, order of the day 
to go to public hearing action calendar. So I would like to keep it um, as proposed. But don't you think at least the city that, that manager's is my recommendation. report yeah. should? That's my recommendation. Okay. People can you know still vote what they like to vote. So um, can we? Yes. So I would I would support Mayor Way's suggestion, which is uh, Councilmember Chow's uh, proposal here, except that ten and eleven would remain in their originally proposed positions. Okay. So, Councilmember Chow, um, or anybody who want to join in. Um, uh, so up, please. just wondering, I re I really think the information the city manager yes, provide I, you Julie, is we, good. We hear Do you, you think we hear you already. That should go you, first. Can you, can you vote? Yeah, okay. you can vote for your own proposal. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Sure. You're gonna vote for your own proposal? Yeah, I'll yeah. vote for my own. Okay. Yeah. And Council Member uh, Moore or, or Vice Mayor Mohan. Oh. I, I'm not quite clear what uh, uh, this uh, represents, but what I would like to see is uh, um, this uh, city manager's report going uh, further down, uh, as well as the council reports and comments. So uh, I see it canceled here, but I'm oh I'm not sure where I'm seeing it. Uh, uh, where I'm seeing it uh, on the list of items. So uh, I support. Uh, uh, the order as is, except for the fact that uh, I would like to see the city manager's report as well as council reports and comments go down further. And further as to where? Can you look uh, at the maybe, uh, um, after information mm, items? Um, Af after oral communication uh, continued? Mm, uh, after pulled consent calendar? Uh, yeah, maybe Which one? after pulled consent calendar. Right? Okay, so that is, okay, that is your uh, recommendation. You're going to vote for that? Yes. Okay. Mayor Way, if it helps, yes. can we have um, Chris show the sure. version that um, uh, that's being voted on? Perfect. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because mm -hmm. I think there's some confusion we about where. We have three versions yeah. now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Given that Chris is going to have to clean it up at the end. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, C. Attorney Jensen. So let me scroll down more if um, uh, right but Okay, um, that should be, um, okay, that should be popping okay. up. Um, let me. So um, I will renumber this, of course, but um, postponements and orders of the day is act added after ceremonial items. Um, Items removed from con consent calendar is noted after any continued oral, oral communications. Uh, council and staff comments and future agenda items follows that, and uh, and then um, and I believe that captures uh, the changes in that the the mayor in the the, the mayor's uh, vote in the straw poll. Mayor. Yes, please. Um, Councilmember Moore. But that, so Councilmember Chow's proposal is still on the table. Yes. Okay, we can still, can we, I remember that. So uh, I would. Yeah, council, I think, believe Councilmember Chow would, would, would move uh, the reports, the staff, the, the, the um, staff and council reports uh, mm -hmm. up. That, that would be the only difference, I believe. Right. But yeah. Also, I think in my version, the poll, the no, consent this is agenda. Not your version. Your oh. version is still there. Yeah. This is the so I, I would yeah. I would like to add the poll consent agenda item should be right after action calendar so that all the actions are together rather than scattered uh, mm, to be after our communication. Especially recently, you, you want a, a there are. Yours? Can you revise yours and show us then? Um. Because you have one on on that we're gonna you you, you voted okay. on or, or your straw put put vote on. So if you want to change it, you need to change it now. But um, 
Uh, Councilman Memore, do you have a comment? Um, yes, really quick. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to see the, that council and staff comments and future agenda items come after informational items, just in case there's something in informational items that we have a have a, a thought that we maybe want to bring it back. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, um, so that's another proposal. So now I think we have three proposals. This one, Council Member Chow's one, I don't know if you want to change it again, and then Council Member Moore's one is to move nine, uh, 10, 11, and 12 um, behind 13. I, d I just wanted to make sure that the, um, that the future agenda items that we got, uh, we got to catch all of the information from the meeting and then so, at the very So can you tell me which items you want to move? Um, 10, 11, the, 12 to um, behind 13? Council, but council and staff comments and future agenda items comes right before adjournment. Council President, uh, council reports and comments, that's 10. It, on this list? On, on, on what I'm, yeah, see the Attorney Jensen's list. I'm looking yes, at, yeah, yeah. he's showing it under 12 and I want 10 to, and 11. Um, I, uh, the only one that I'm really sticking with is making sure that we have a last chance to get that council. Right, uh, I'm trying to get your proposals. 10 to 11 move to behind 13. Um, no, no, the, oh. the council and staff comments which are sitting under 12, that one sentence there, council and staff comments and future agenda items, which is our, right now, that's been our second to last item right before adjournment, okay. that we c maintain that so that we get our last chance uh, to put those future agenda items. Put that before, after 13. Yeah, I, okay. I guess, uh, if I may, I mean, I would just like to clarify that informational items are generally something that that's, that is part of the agenda packet, that so it can be distributed to council and the public, but they're not something that would ordinarily be discussed in the ordinary course of business. So, so that that's that's why the the placement is here, and and many jurisdictions use those um, as a way of distributing information to the council and the public when there's not necessarily a need for a discussion of that information. Okay. And, and we've had a number of those requests in the last um, few council meetings where that would be amenable to that kind of solution. Okay, thank you. Uh, I propose we straw vote and try it out and we can always come back and, and you know, adjust it when we try. Uh, anyway, let's mm, straw vote. So we have three sessions, three proposals. Can I modify my proposal? Yes, please. And see if I have support. Okay, so I moved to the. Sharing? I'm sharing. I, I don't right? see your sharing. Oh, there we go. See, so I moved the council report and the city manager report back to mm -hmm. to align with council okay. member ways, but I do feel the pull the consent agenda calendar item should be right after action. Especially recently, there are a lot more um, okay. items on there. And oh, okay, um, we can see that. Can we um, have a struggle? I do vote? want to clarify. Can we specify? So the, according to the city manager right now, information items, we cannot ask questions, right? I'm sorry, I did not say that. I just said the council has discretion to ask questions. But the attorney says... Means we can decide at that time so whether we, we want to ask questions if we or not have a question we <coughs> could decide to do that okay that's good then i do agree that future agenda should be the very last one in case some of this item we want to say have a study session all on. right thank you council member yeah. chow let's uh, go with the straw vote please I'll, I'll support uh, um, council member chow's new arrangement mm. can we see um, the kiss oh here it's Orange still area. there it's, it's not on my screen it's is it not shared no no oh okay let me share again okay and then okay. council member more vice I mayor i support okay. council mm -hmm. member chow's um okay, so order okay i support it as well all right i support that too all right you don't have okay. to show it we support thank it you. thank you <laughs> okay <laughs> so let's move to uh where are we now? Adding item to the consent agenda, 8.5. Oh, I, I, are we going to include a staff recommendation on the previous one? I totally just didn't get that. Oh, so my included a staff recommendation, right? Wait. Did, did we or did we not? 
The staff yeah. recommendation you mean to move the to add the oral communication at the end. Okay, Already. that was included. I think we're good enough. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so let's go to number um, eight point five one. Point of privilege. We've been going yes. for two and three quarters hours, so yeah, yeah. It, it might be good to take a five minute recess before okay, we start. Okay, five minutes. Next. So we are at. I'm, I'm all gung ho about going. Continue to go. <laughs> okay, eight forty four. Now let's come back at eight fifty. 8.45, five minutes, thank you.